Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to the Elendor Chronicles, brought to you by the Component Cast. Before we get on with tonight's episode, though, of course, we have a few things we need to cover. First of which being, if you want to support the show, there's a multitude of ways you can do so. The best way you can do it is actually just sharing our social media messages, finding a link to one of our art past videos, sharing it with your friends, talking about it, and come joining us on our Discord. Second of all, if you can financially support us, you can do so by becoming a Twitch sub or by a Patreon. Patreon gives us the biggest slice of the pie, and you get loads of behind the scenes and older content and all sorts of fun things over there. I'll actually be up uploading something that I'm going to be using on the stream today. Uh, as part of that and a little bit of uh, behind the scenes on how I've made this little bit of module here uh, because we're going to be doing something slightly different with that. Other than that, we're also available on YouTube or either on Spotify where you can also pick up our um, completely free to use Soundtrack. soundtrack there you go there my brain go. couldn't think of the word soundtrack but we have a completely free use soundtrack that you can use in your uh, own content creation you can use it in your youtube videos your your uh snapchat stories your instagram stories it's also it's also baked in app for tiktok instagram snapchat all of those kind of things so you can get it right right there without having to download the files first or it's like on Spotify. Give it a listen, give it a share, and uh, help us out that way as well. It's completely free. We're not going to ding you for copyright. You can just use it, whatever. I don't even ask that you that you credit us, just only if you want to at the, at the end of the day. Um, other, other than that, I don't think there's anything else we have to cover. So let's get on with tonight's episode, shall we? So, last time we played, which was a little while ago now, I'll do a recap for it. Our brave adventurers found themselves making a hasty but tactical retreat from another plane of existence for the first, first time for definite that they had uh, transited the planes, although they may have done it in previous encounters and not quite known about it. Um, our adventures ended up in a plane of the abyss which after some destruction and various unforeseen combats decided that three people is not enough for the challenge ahead if they are to destroy what could be the heart of all nullian worship they're gonna need some help so they evac'd out where Valmir was uh, promptly ambushed by an assassin who was set to try and close the portal. In the middle of the night, our adventurers did, however, manage to subdue said assassin who provided some very useful information and was actually kind of forthcoming about, you know, uh, what he had done, what he was doing, and who had hired him. From the assassin, the, the, the death mark assassin, uh, the, sorry, the black mark assassin, you found out that someone within the High Court had hired him to close the portal. Someone who signed the um, order with the initial P. You took this information to the Citadel of Gervalu and took it right to the High King, someone who you had only met once before at the at the second summit, who, whilst upset, did take the news well and has since locked down the Citadel, which is where we are today. 
I'm not going to... We do, I do have some more to say on this lockdown, but before we do, of course, I've got to give you guys the chance to earn yourself a little boon for this episode. Um, so I'm going to be flicking open a spell book, as many of you are magic users, and I'm going to ask you, what spell has the material component, spheres of glass, crystal, or mineral, and why? Right. As we all know, most uh, most material components for spells are puns in some way. Uh, it is not scrying. No, scrying is scrying has more specific requirements than that. Spheres of crystal, glass, or mineral. They are non-consumed by this spell. No, I wouldn't be because they don't. That legitimately does not ring a bell. Uh, okay. Um, um, no, it's it's. it's can, can I get one more shot? It, I, 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 yeah, you can have another shot, or I can give some more clues. Feeble mind. It is feeble mind. Why? Yes. Couldn't tell you. Because you lose your marbles. Because you lose ah! your marbles. Exactly. Uh, it makes you lose your marbles, so of course you need spheres of glass or crystal or mineral for the spell. Yep. Um, well done, guys. Uh, I will have... That is a shared inspiration that you guys can spend. I, um, I, I definitely should not take part in that shared inspiration because I was <laughs> not... not not my wheelhouse. To, to be fair, you probably would have had a good shot at getting the pun once you worked out the Oh, yeah, marbles. no, the pun, the pun I could have got. Exactly. Yeah. I, only remembered, exactly. I only remembered it because uh, of Critical Role, and right, Marisha Sean. Ray was commenting, I, I think you cut out because you were allowed. Yep. She said, I don't want to be a vegetable. <laughs> yes, I remember the scene exactly as well. But yeah, that's the spell Feeble Mind. Now, I did just allude to it, but I've set our adventurers a little bit of a challenge today. So, the way that we're going to do this final leg of investigation is a little differently to how we've done it before. We're going to move away from the standard kind of D&D role investigation check, mainly because our great adventurers here, that particular stat line is not their forte, despite them having some very, very excellent skills elsewhere. So, I'm going to set up the investigation is a, 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 a mini game in itself and I have given them a map uh, I'm going to quickly change to the battle map screen oh no we, I use the sorry it's the cast only screen I've got a map here um, which is the citadel of Gervalu we have the left side and the right side which is the two sort of floors it's kind of not i've already explained this to the guys but essentially this is the main structure and then this is if any buildings or rooms are stacked upon them and we're essentially going to play a giant game of somewhat cluedo um, i was going to say i feel like i'm about to start playing clue it's it's kind it's it's vaguely oh, right, based on it uh but it's, the idea is you guys now have three days from where we left off we left off by the way with you interrogating the um new crown prince uh, about who the hell he is, because nobody had ever seen him before out of the group. Um, that's something I forgot to mention. You took the news to the High King, you spoke to the court, he locked down the Citadel. Um, I've given you a list of very, very key characters that you've already met and know some things about, as well as giving you a scope of how many people are in this castle. You have three days before, essentially, you run out of time. So this is going to be a time management mini game, essentially. And uh, very, you can do various roles and checks. I'm going to give you descriptions if you visit places. Uh, certain places will be, you know, red herrings. Others will give you certain bits of information. Places like the Magister's Lab, which is where um, uh, Uzador, that's his labs. Like, you can go to there for certain elements of help. Basically, kind of still structuring, like, uh, the normal D&D investigation, but I'm hoping that giving you the map of where you can and can't explore will be uh, a better thing. Plus, different people will be in different locations at different times. Um, to that regard, this is a physical map that has been handed to you uh, by... Sorry. To, to, um, not Gil uh, Gilliam by the uh by his head bodyguard um one of the p's uh, on your uh, list 
Perkman. Uh, yeah, Perkman Hamo. Um, he's the second in, com- in command of the High Guard, but he is the personal bodyguard of the High King. Basically, it's one of those things of um, because of his bodyguard duties, he doesn't have the time to manage the rest of the high, like the High Guard. Um, so he's he's second in command, but he's like the most trusted guard of the High King. He's the one that's provided you with this map, and you have you yourselves have this list of names, um, and he basically explains that um yeah you know that you're under a time pressure i as a gm are setting it at three days before depending on what you do time may run out so uh discuss uh tackle this if you want me to explain certain rooms i can do so and then essentially plan out where you'll go first so essentially Right now, it is the evening of day one. You have until afternoon day four to complete your investigation. That's how much time the High King has kind of given you. Before either you need to give up and not find this infiltrator and go and deal with the portal, uh, because that's also about the time that it um, was given to you by your assets outside, that things will be ready to assault back into the abyss. So that's kind of your that's kind of your flow of what you've got here. Something that is immediately standing out to me is uh, the court mage Uzidor, uh, the magister, is a divination wizard. Yes, and potentially there could be something in that school of magic that could help us divine the truth of uh, who's being a dick. You're muted. It's Beth. Uh, Theoretically, the problem is I am not a wizard. Nor am I. He is also the person that gave you legend lore and um helped you get as much as you go. Don't forget, you've also already got your starting point. It's the investigation. Actually, Lambert, would you mind uh, reading out the piece of legend lore you were given last time as a reminder to both the party assembled and to the audience as to what piece of, what information you guys already have in this? Uh... That's the one that's in my private channel. I think it's in your private channel. Black is the bastard. Yes, that's the one. Black is the bastard indeed. Black is the bastard that violates a name. In Noel's reward, a blood debt paid. A sack of coins to pay the debt. A blooded blade of greed beset. With turbulent wolves dance the vexed. One silent song will mark the next. Yeah, you have that as well as a starting point which is what led you down the line of possibly interrogating uh the new crown crown prince heir heir apparent what was that put in lambert's chat wasn't ruby the one that did the it was uh lambert makes his session notes in our private chat between each other i will yeah that was just this this is my notes that that would have been very useful for us to also have is what i'm saying (laughs) all right there you go i've shared it as well Blame Lambert, not me. Oh, I'll do right. Wait, 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 you blame me. I was just making notes. This is this is high tier D and D play right now. Making notes. Oh yeah, notebooks at the ready is a very very. Um. Okay. Let me have a look at this map. Yeah. Is the left side or the right side? Left the side is ground, ground floor. floor. Left, Left side, side is ground floor. floor. Okay. I think we should play into our strengths for this particular investigation. I think my best bet is to go to the kitchens and carouse with the staff cook, help clean with them, and might even have a chance to talk to some guards who, you know, they may not know a lot, but a slip up of the wrong way, a hint might appear. If there's going to be a coup d'etat, 
There must be people informed of it who are not just the guy in charge. They must have loyal allies somewhere in there. Um, on that note, then, maybe I can head myself off to the glass library, because I do the reading thing with the, with the languages, and maybe, I don't know, there might be some... You know, librarians, they tend to be quiet and perceptive. They might have heard, seen something. Library seemed like a good place to make plot. I don't know. And I think, Breton, you'd do well in the armory. The armory? Well, if we're going to be dealing with guards and uh, Maybe the, the office of the high guard then, on that, on that case. Well, there's also the crown smithery and the royal armory. Maybe the weapons there are marked in a way to distinguish them from the normal weapons that none of us could perceive. Null weaponry tends to be darker in nature. Um, can you explain what some of these buildings are? Like Clarence's Keep, what is Clarence's Keep? Sure. Uh, so Clarence's Keep uh, is named after the first ever heir to Narda, uh, to the Nardathel once it was split into the High Kingdom format that it is today. Um, it was built probably around 600, 700 years ago, and it's just named for him. It's the main like, sort of stronghold keep. It's the oldest part as well of the uh, palace, uh, of the city. Okay, and, and the rest of the thing was kind of built around it. Yeah. Uh, on this list of people that we have been given, was this also something that was written by Perkram, or is this purely for no, this, our knowledge? This, this is Midgeman uh, giving you a list of all the names that we've forgotten over the campaign, but you've met all of these people. Right. Okay, because I was. I was just curious as to whether um, Perkram no. had written that the Queen Elector is totally not a vampire. I, I thought potentially that could be a, a, a threat to tug at. You'll remember that the the Queen, the, the people of Haveray, that's where James is from. Put it that way. Yeah. Actually, on that note, maybe I will try and talk to the Queen and uh, maybe talk to her about James be a good way of doing it so this is going to be essentially we'll be splitting these up into periods so this will be the first late afternoon investigatory period for you guys you can split up or you can um, go elsewhere you can also once per i'm gonna for general information about certain characters, for example, say you want to try and find so-and-so in said period. You have one use per time period of just ask a random staff member of, hello, have you seen um, King Elector Uvlin of Lord Elise anywhere? Or do you have an idea where he might be to give you sort of... Uh, a clue guidance sort of thing to drive you towards in the area because people are going to be milling about moving around kind of thing. Because, as I recall, people are, are assigned to the rooms and meals are brought to them. Meals yes. Will be, yes, I believe meals will be being brought to people's private chambers rather than any sort of grand feast. We're trying to avoid exactly. um, yeah, yeah. larger meetings. So. With that, can Ruby then deduce, presuming she gets in with the kitchen people, where the rooms of the the people we're investigating are? You could you could certainly inquire about that in the kitchen. Uh, How it about would be him? it would be made known to you if you ask Perkram, who's handing you the map, etc. That all of the kings, the high or the the electors have a private suite slash set of rooms in the Palace of the Plains. That's what that whole wing is. It's essentially all of the private suites. Um, however, the High King lives in the High Queen. The High King's rooms are in the High King's dwellis, dwellings. His consort is in the Palace of the Lady. Summon the Elector Counts. 
someone the elect account. Well, we did. They're all here. <laughs> That's already been done. <laughs> if you want to contact people outside, of course, you can use spells if you've got them. However, you can also send messages via the rookery okay. um, as well. Also, there could be a, a, an interesting place to investigate because it's also where messages will be coming in for other people. Um, how how confined is everyone to their chambers? Are they is there so, three milling around? Are people on the first floor restricted there or it's basically it's a case of it's very hard to tie down kings, for example, but the majority of their staff, etc., will be tied. So like the general servants of uh, King Elector Terrawin will only be allowed in Terrawin's places. Staff of the, as I said in the handouts, um, the majority of the general castle staff have all been chucked out. And it's just like who they have to keep it day to run it, like day to day running. Um, like basically the heads of departments are, are still around. And for the majority, as long as people don't go too close to air quotes restricted areas, they should be fine to still move about. It's not like everyone is, it's not like full isolation, you're stuck in your rooms because there's an element of that actually will make investigations a little harder um, generally because, you know, harder to catch if someone's out doing something out of place if they're not allowed to do what they're normally doing. Looking okay. at the list of all the names we have, we don't know who the steward of the Citadel is. No. That is not a person whom we have met. That sounds like a person that it would be worth our time to meet and be on familiar terms with for this investigation. Because if anybody's going to be responsible for knowing the day and day of everybody and what they're doing, it's going to be the steward. Sound logic. I agree. Uh, we also could talk to Bastion. Yep. Think of offer. Yeah, there's there's a lot of options you, for you guys to do, and we're kind of in investigation period one, so it's just deciding what you want to do first, where you want to go, because it's going to be basically into the various chunks. And of course, you've got to sleep at some point. Yeah. Uh, I would say getting Bastion on our side or just any general conversations we want to have with any of the big four. Uh, three, if we want to rule out Perkrim, but I say let's not just rule him out just because the king said he's a great guy. Uh, because if memory serves, uh, and this is a secret that should not be well known, nobody knows that King Bastion has a Deva that is joined with him. Even more important information, Devas know when they hear a lie. So just having him okay. present when we are communicating with these individuals, we don't have to ask them outright to try and get them to convince if they're working for Null or not, but just <laughs> getting them to admit to catching them in just the tiniest lie to give us reason to put more pressure on who we should be investigating with is a, is a sound mind. I also think it might be worth just having one of us because magical communication is a big thing and it's going to play a large part. Uh, keeping eyes on who is going to and from the rookery uh not a not a bad idea i don't know how well monitoring all communications going in and out would come off towards everyone here that might seem suspicious but that is a trouble tell you what um do you want to talk to bastion or should i He knows we get me. on uh, most well with when Zadar. We saved his fucking life. Zadar. Zadar, okay. This little awkward because the last time I spoke with him, uh, he was granting me uh, this suit of armor. Uh, and the last time he spoke to you was before you disintegrated. Got better. Hey, you... then that's that's a celebration. It's like, yo, hello. Uh, no, I'm. That's not I, true. I reintegrated. You, you you met him again at the summit. 
the summit, sure. Mm. That was that was a moment that happened, but it was it's still a it's a fleeting moment where everyone almost be. drowned. I then he said I can relate to him now because of soul. He and I share a similarity. This is really not something that I am good at doing. If there's a possibility that we can have him present in a room, not necessarily a part of the conversation, but just there. And as you said, he can detect lies, or the David can. So let's say we want to investigate somebody. We say, hey, can we have a meeting with you in the library, somewhere nice and quiet. He can be reading nearby, you know, minding his own business. Here, eavesdrop on a conversation. Brighton's going to take a moment. And it, it, a bit in, in oddness, because I realize this is something that you don't do in D&D. &D. You don't talk about, like, your characters begrudgingly or dutifully, like, cleaning their armor, uh, mm -hmm. ridding themselves, uh, cleaning, washing stuff. It's something, sometimes it comes up, you're like, oh, I can get a warm bath, it's great. But it's not something you talk about in detail. And this is not a, something that, obviously, we as people can understand as practicality from the real world. Going to places like the Abyss or having dealings with creatures from those places. I wonder if that just leaves a stench on people. Oh, Not like a, a divine stench, but like a, a physical sense. Like the idea of you, when you deal with devils, you smell like sulfur because you're just around beings that smell constantly of sulfur. Is there anyone here that might be really good at sniffing that out just because they have above yeah. average exceptions? I, my first joke was like, what, do we ask the vampire? No, because... what I'm thinking is the the guy that we met, the the magister, when we spoke to him, he pointed at us before we said anything and said, "You've been to the abyss." Bro knows. Bro does know, but yeah, it's the same with. Uh, I would say that it's very true that there is always a lingering mal malignance with certain powers and planes, etc. In the same way that a paladin can divine sense that evil comes to him, like comes to you, like a s strong smell or a thick taste in your mouth, or something good, like smells sweet. Like, I would say, sensor. There are sensory ways of detecting certain things. There's any, any blood silver here, we'll find it. That's not going to be a problem. Yeah. But I doubt Maybe... that anybody is going to be carrying blood silver. No, they would hide it somewhere away from normal routines and expected things. Imagine anyone who does have the dealings with the Abyss in that way either isn't going to the Abyss personally or is in some way capable of hiding that uh you know that kind of thing right they'll they'll be able to hide that uh you know malignancy i just, i can't imagine they would do it personally either What do I have All right. So, we need to settle on the, the first afternoon that we're going to be spending and where we're going and what we're looking into. Uh, I think it's going to be well worth our time to become proper acquainted with the steward of the Citadel. Uh, I think Brighton will, will, will take a point to do that. Uh, he is effect He's effectively been not the primary steward, but, you know, steward to Ruby his entire life. So, uh, that is something where he would want to familiarize us with himself, Seward of the Keep. Sure. Uh, and that and that would go sort of there. Uh, talking to Bastion seems like a really good idea. Getting the Deva on our side and just their his expertise in sniffing out things that may not be what they seem would be huge. Uh, talking to the Queen Elector, uh, vampires they have a way of seeing and grasping at things that we don't. That seems like a good call. The Magister also just having that innate sense of you've you've been touched by somewhere else. Not to mention, that. I mean, the Magister's already on her side, but he is a divination wizard, so it might be worth just talking to him to see if I don't know any visions come to him, and like he gets an idea of 
a place a good time to be at a certain place to see if something happens so why don't i go talk to bastion and see if i can confer with him a way to better sense corruption maybe the uh, is it alistair i think might have some insights that i could learn um I don't know if DM's got an answer to that one. I'd have to go to Bastion to find out. Right. Um, I, I, I have a, a question. Where, in my inventory, I've got um, James's codex and research notes. I know the research notes are about the plague affecting the um, elves, the, the black lung. Mm -hmm. uh, what does codex refer to? That's all of his, like, past dealings it's kind of like okay. a it's a scientific diary put it that way i believe as well as you know some personal honorific codes personal histories it's not quite a dear diary here thing but it's like got elements that are autobiographical okay um, well, I, I was thinking maybe I, I could, uh, talk to the Queen of Havere, try and get her on side by basically saying how great of a guy James was and how it was, um, you know, how he fell and how he fought for good and, like, and I would have read through in the time since I have acquired his codex, I would have read through it. Um, no matter what language it was written in. And mm -hmm. um, so I would I would be able to, you know, pretty eloquently, I would say, um, speak to James's character. And obviously with him being from Havre as well, I think that might be of some interest. Okay. So we've got one, per one person going to the offices of the stewards and two people heading towards the palaces of the plains. Or the Palace of the Plains for this first period. Are we if taking... You're gonna, if you're going to go to Bastion, I'm going to go to the kitchens. I mean, we need to divide our efforts. Well, no, 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 because yeah. basically um, Valmir was going to go to the Queen of Havare. Elector. Okay. Um, these are these are two very important people. They just happen to be in the same place. Okay. As, yeah. as far as you can ascertain right now, that would be where their personal chambers are. Like I said, all of the electors share each have essentially, essentially each nation of Nardathel has its own mini set of like four or five, essentially a large suite in in the Palace of the Plains. It's like a lodge that they can use when they're at the High Court. Um, right. Let's let's start with you. Uh, Lake. Let's head to the offices of the steward. You transit your way through uh, Gilliam's Great Hall and Clarence's Keep all the way to the first lodge, which was the, the this first wing of the, uh, the citadel that was built post the original keep, into the old chambers. There's a lot of the lower chambers are like various staff housing and lodging for certain guards etc and then on bo on top of that there's various offices as well as the the officiants chambers so stuff like the stewards the magisters like that's where they have their private quarters as well but you head to the offices of the steward and uh, it is a set of very simple rooms uh there is a hallway um through the middle uh, with an arch, like sort of arch doorway within four rooms either side. Um, and there is essentially like a receptionist. Um, it's just a little clerk on a, a side desk, like sort of at the front of it. Um, and you can read on plaques on each of the doors. You see one is archives. Uh, one says um, like uh, uh, Lord Treasurer's uh, one says um, Master of Coins offices uh, and one says like Castle Castilian's office 
and one says, uh, um, Officer the Steward. Mm. And um, the, the clerk looks up and goes, um, Oh, uh, afternoon, Sir Knight. Um, how may I help you? I'm here. Uh, hoping that I might steal a moment of the steward's time. Oh, uh, oh, you're one of those investigators I've been told about. Um, oh, absolutely. I'll, I'll, I'll let the, uh, I'll let the steward know you're here. <laughs> Breton just kind of blinks at her. It's like, I guess it's not really a secret, but at the same time, to have it just so plainly thrown in his face, he's just like, I wouldn't have chosen to have that information just said aloud at all times of the day, but sure, we'll play with that. Um, the clerk kind of knocks on the door, so it goes in. Um, there's an there's a knight here to see you. I, I, there, I think it's the one that the uh, the king's given access to. Or is it that? Um, he'll see you now. Step into the office. It's a. Um, it's kind of a little warm office, like the bed, like the bare stone walls of what would just be a room within a castle have are there's nary a stone in sight. Whether there's a bookcase, a tapestry, uh, there's a warm glow to the fireplace. There's also a nice uh, set of stained glass in the window out towards the south of the castle wall uh, that's bringing in some quite uh, nice light with a, a well-kept sort of set of uh, like deep green uh, curtains, uh, it's dark wood furniture, a nice sort of little seating area, but then a desk. And you see uh, sat behind the desk a, um, a slightly older gentleman, probably in his 60s, um, he has very stout features, um, if not somewhere in his lineage, there's probably some dwarf, just his bone structure is very large, um, for, for a human, but he, he, he retains, you know, a, a good five, eight, five, nine in stature if he was to stand up, um, You'd see, he's got uh, a single sort of uh, magnifying glass um, that's kind of up over his eye, um, and he's got that kind of classic. Um, he's got like a very classic sort of tied back uh, set of hair, but he's got kind of widow's peaking at the front, um, and he's got a tiny sort of thin moustache, um, and and he just uh, he, he looks up and he's like. Ah, um, and you can see on the desk as well, it says, uh, Stuart Girard, uh, Renard, Renard the Win. I will put that in chat for you. I could, I could try and spell that, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get it right. Girard Renaldwin. Girard Renaldwin. Um, Renaldwin. Um, sure. yes. And he says, ah, uh, so you are, uh, greetings tonight, um, you are one of the individuals that has us under lockdown, correct? I'm one of the, I'm one of the aides to the, uh, the current situation that we are dealing with, hoping to resolve everything uh, to the best of our ability. Sensitive situation, hence why the lockdown was deemed necessary. And uh, what has brought me to your office today? Uh, you are the steward of the Citadel of Gevalu, which means that you are a person to whom I imagine if anything goes on in the Citadel, you are the first to know about it. Uh, absolutely. I um, I handle a lot of the general management, uh, staff, rosters, uh, staff pay, ship uh, imports, exports. There is not much that does not pass my office without at least some knowledge of it. Um, how may I do any service? of the uh, do any of the individuals currently housing here? Uh, would any requests go through you, or are those handled through their personal affairs? Uh, well, we hmm. most requests will go through my office, um, especially if it is like bringing in foodstuffs, ales, uh, uh, furniture, and 
that kind of thing, anything would go through here. Normally, uh, an adjutant or an aide of one of the courts would come to here request it if it was for, say, one of the other kingdoms, or if it's just general staffing, that would also come through me. However, there is some autonomy with, for example, the head chef will handle a lot of the food, and I will just no, don't denote when it is meant to be arriving, who is on hand to go for it. Uh, a lot of the master of the horse will manage the running of the stables but I will handle any of the shipments and making sure everyone else gets paid on time none of the however none of the defense or anything like that is handled by my office that will be the office of the high guard uh, who is directly responsible for managing the rookery the rookery uh, that would be bright quill bright quill runs bright the rookery to have a conversation with him as well later just because uh, it would be well to do to know how information is getting in and out uh, obviously I don't want to know what's in the information just want to know who's sending in and out information lots of correspondence may be going on at this time people want to understand what's going on there is still a war going on after all well and Brandon just kind of smiled at the very thought of that uh, maybe not the one we started but the one that's going on and as he's saying that, he's just he's just reading, uh, just trying to read Gerard's face, just trying to get a feel for, for how he, just the way he said that. There's actually a, a, a give me a quick insight check, but it's not going to be a very high DC because this man is, it's not exactly hiding it. Yeah, hey. that's, that's fine enough. Yeah, there's a little bit of a sadness. Um, when you mention the war uh, that covers this guy's face. He's, he's, he's clearly emotional towards the topic. Um, you also sensed a little bit of disdain when he mentioned Bright Quill. Okay. I'm a fan of Bright Quill. Remorseful about the war itself. Okay. He kind of clicks his teeth. I'm sorry if I brought up a sensitive topic. No. Uh, if uh, Bright Quill is being cagey, it's giving you some answers. Mm -hmm. They tend to hide a they tend to hide a stash of luxury goods that they are fond of in some of the rook nests. He changes it from time to time, but he doesn't think I know about it. If that were to go missing, his character would become a bit more unpleasant, but he would be... Uh, far more easy to control. That is a very interesting bit of information that you've managed to acquire. So you take your stewardship very seriously. If this castle does not run, it is my failed duty. Over the years, I have had to get my way. You know, if you ever find the time that you wish to uh, retire from uh, the high stress of running the situation, uh, eventually, House Thunderstar will have itself rebuilt, and it may very well need to see one of its own. I will make a note of it. Is there anything else I can help you with, sir? Uh, no, I think those are the only questions I need to ask now. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, if I have any of the other questions, I will... <laughs> I think I'll send a messenger. As you up. He goes back to his writing. We now jump over towards the Palace of the Plains, where Valmir and Ruby uh, have entered. It's up. I Basically, there is both an outside st set of stairs um, that go above the doors to the Hall of the Shabal, um, that go onto like an outside balcony, and you can go in there, or you can go into the interior staircases. Um, but you opens up into this large lodge house. You're kind of in a... Um, almost like plaza 
uh, within this building uh, of its own. It's, uh, there's like large statue, statues of uh, famous Nardafelian heroes and like big auspicious uh, paintings of various kings all over the uh, all over the room. But other than that, it's a very very empty room with various sort of uh, doors off of this kind of slightly. It's the map is kind of bad in the fact that it's not quite a square in this central building there because there's a large because basically one end is where the door is and the, that's a flat wall. But to the far end, it's actually like a large bay window. Um, that is, um, yeah, the, the, there's a large bay window that actually looks out towards the city um, with very, very reinforced glass. Um, and you actually can see quite a lot of the rest of the city. You can see, like, uh, the the hill at which the, the main temple of the Chevaliants on. It's very bright, open. But there's also doors off of this into the five other kingdoms, each divided by you see like there's like a statue of their founding king holding a banneret or and shield of their coat of arms or a famous weapon and their coat of arms uh, burnished on like you know a surcoat etc kind of demarking which which way to go um the so there's the five you know the five kings are holding those there is a actually also a statue of a a knight piously looking out the window facing uh the 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 mountain that's got all of the temples and stuff on who i think ruby been being around breton would actually know that that is a uh statue of the chevalier argent uh, the 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 silver knight who was the sixth son of the original nardothels and uh never had their own kingdom So who would like and, to go first out of you two? We'll... And uh, is uh, the who, who all is it, like how many people are in this room right now? Or are they for in a giant room, room? There is actually no one in this plaza bit. There was okay. one high guard at the door as you came in, but they're not physically in this room. Uh, there's a little sort of. Yeah, this is it's one of those things of you're in a giant room and it's like very echoey in the fact that it's that room, but it's like no one is in here. Good acoustics. Fantastic acoustics. In fact, on that note, if there was a palace party that was going on, this would be sort of that entrance hall where they'd have like a, a five piece string quartet playing all night kind of thing, which people would just walk past. Um, but essentially, yeah, there's, there's like different. Um, suites and little side sanctums that uh take to the, the various other kingdoms um to get your bearings it would be uh Havere. it will be Havere lord delice on one side othre Chaltez, and uh Glesui on the other oh well, yeah, i'm gonna go talk to bastion yes. We'll talk to yours and we'll meet back up later. Sounds good to me. Okay. Ruby will make her way to Bastion's door. Sure. Um We'll start with you then. We you head to the southern portion of the Palace of the Plains, and actually the furthest of the lodges away. Um You find it under guard um, of, uh, but this is guards of Othrayan armor. Basically, each each kingdom is allowed to have its staff in its lodge. Um, and it's actually a guard you recognize. Um, it's th the individual that came with, the, there was only one individual that came with uh, Bastion uh, to the second summit and it's that individual right there at the door and he kind of looks at you and goes he kind of gives that sort of that knowing look of oh right that explains the lockdown um, 
as you see uh, Philip Levert, who is uh, Philip the Green. Uh, it was this sort of... Oh, he's the... Um, he, he's the one that you all liked when you first went to Othray because he was that kind of like... He was a soldier way before he was a knight and was kind of took no bullshit guy. Uh, he's that, that baldy, balding, very uh, strong marshal guy. Well, then Ruby will slip into fluid Fionian and go, Mr. the Green, nice to see you again. Lady Sunderstar, it is a pleasure to see you always. I, well, okay, it's a pleasure to see you. However, it is bad tidings to also see you. I hope you understand. Uh, would you like to see the king? I would. And I will point out, respectfully, that despite the turbulence of the last time we crossed paths, the world got better for it. That's arguably true, but... Every time I've been near you, at least a couple of days later, a portion of the building we were in exploded. So I... Well, uh, <laughs> yeah. However, the last one of those times it happened, you died. So I guess everything does get better. Either way, I will let the king know that you are here. Thank you. And he goes in and he, he, he leads you in. and But you see this... Um, this stylized set of suites, again, it's got a sort of an open plaza area um, with rooms to the side. It's got its own sort of private kitchen as well. However, this one doesn't seem to be in use. Uh, some bookcases uh, and what seem to be, you know, private rooms. On the ground floor area, there seems to be, you know, uh, servant suites, uh, adjutant suites. And then above, there seems to be a, a royal chamber. And out from the royal chamber, eventually, uh, King Elector Bastion of Othray does appear with a smile on his face, um, holding a book. Uh, it seemed to have been doing some light reading. And he, he comes down and joins you. We all bow. Your Majesty. Lady Sunderstar, it is wonderful to see you. However, <laughs> I already caught it from, I already caught it from Mr. The Green, so. I thought you would have. Well, please, sit. I'd like to have a conversation with you. Sure. Uh, Philip, wait outside. Tough. I uh, suppose it should come of no surprise to you that when my group comes a knocking, things tend to have issues. And I am sorry to say that this is no exception. I am only pleased in the fact that my wife is at home in Othray for once and didn't join me for the trip because, like you said, things get problematic when you're around. Yes. Although I would rather have you around for those moments than not. Well, if anything is to be said about what's coming, we are working our best to stop it. So, here is what we think we know and she will go to the process she she embellish but he's gonna get the straight up truth they went to the abyss they tracked down what they think is probably a conspiracy inside the castle and they think it's somebody here and they can't quite figure out who mm -hmm. which is when she'll come to why she came to him first i understand that your insight towards certain things is extraordinarily profound That's one way Mind to put it. Yes. Um, while I have no such connection, it is only through Brayla's grace that I was able to adopt my own measure of divinity. I was wondering if there's a way that I could either ascribe to you a way to find that power, or perhaps you could help us find the traitor. I would be... I would be happy to offer my services to help. Though, I think it would be politically risky for me to join you directly on the investigation. I am the High King's cousin, and we are trying to avoid it looking like Othray trying to retain its power in a time where stability is needed. Hence the... Hence the... 
removal of form when it comes to the new air. So if you can find, think of a way I can help, then I will absolutely take part. Um, my cousin trusts me, in, I think, as much as you do. However, he doesn't know about certain faculties within my control. Um, so we know I, that. Oh, sorry. That the uh, traitor's name begins with a P, and there are now five I discovered, courtesy of Philip Leberth outside. Uh, people who have that name here. Okay. Sorry, I didn't realize that Philip was going to be here. And it was the list was four. Um, there's, uh, time to look at my notes, I'm sorry. Um, Bernard Purr, the Master of Ships, um, Burkram, Head of the Guard, uh, Sir Percival Gaunt, the Master of Coin, and, obviously, the King of Choltez, uh, Portis the First. Mm -hmm. We have a pretty good idea that it's one of those four. So how do you, how are you supposing we go about revealing said traitor? If you cannot be directly involved with any investigation, your keen insight would still be extraordinarily valuable. Can you hear a lie that is told, regardless of whether or not you are in tune with Alistair or he is present? Alistair can guide me, and Alistair... within limitations can provide me insight. I would have to be within 30... F within a close distance, around 30 feet for mechanical purposes, um, so to truly sense. have him in contact. Um, also, there are only so many times we can communicate without him having to be exposed per day. So if we could make you invisible somehow and when we are speaking to these other individuals through the course of our investigations, asking them questions, mm -hmm. we won't know if they're lying or not, but you theoretically would if you could hear the conversation. In theory. We would also have to be careful as to... as to where we would handle such a thing. Uh, that kind of spell is... defended against in quite a lot of the Citadel. But... I'm sure... Perhaps a potion, then. Potions, indeed. I know, I'm sure... I'm sure even the High King won't have warded the entire castle because sometimes it's, like you say, uh, proficient to have an area where you can hide things. Speaking of, do you happen to know where that might be? Somewhere in the castle. No. I have to talk to the High Mage for that one. He also might have invisibility potions. Uzador would be a good bet for that. Okay. I have your agreement then, though, if we are if we are able to find a way for you to listen in on conversations that would not uh, put you at risk. Political risk, anyway. Uh... When Where traitors come, political risk is far greater than personal risk. I've already been at personal risk multiple times in your presence. Political risk is the only thing I have left that I'm averse to. Okay. Then I will uh, see what we can do on that front. Um, in a slightly more personal matter, um, is there any way we could, what, assuming all this is concluded, uh, find a way to start rebuilding my manner. 
<laughs> I'm um, my house was burned down, and I'm going to need a home for myself and my uh, <clears throat> husband. husband. Well, to be. Mm. Well, your family is assets upon your yours and your father's demise were written over to your Mother, sibling. Yeah. Uh, I feel this would be a family matter at that point, but the crown would be in your debt once again, and I'm sure that we can do something to help. Okay. Was you're looking particularly whole again, says Alistair. With a... I had a uh, a very long journey that's put the rigors of mind, body, and soul. She says, emphasis on the word soul. Uh, You're beginning to wear it well. Now, I suppose you must get back to some more investigation. Please do let me know how I can help. I'll bring you dinner later. I'll cook something up special for you. I remember what you like. Sounds remarkably good. She will depart. Okay. I'm bound to part. From... Okay, Valmir, over to you. Um, you find the... What is the lodge of the Kingdom of Havre? In front of it is a guard donned in all black armor. Uh, the It's like full plate and a sort of like a bassinet great helm. The... The helmet as well, like the sides of it, have these, uh, like, bat wings. Uh, like, you know how, like, Gondor fountain guards have the, the, the sort of, um, yeah. things over the, the side of the bassinet? Is that but bat wings? Um. The aesthetics are... And peak. then various bits of the armor are, like, wrapped in dark, deep yellow, um like heraldry and like uh like like sashes and banners and it like wraps part of the arm almost like uh the armor is like partly like in like a mummification like wrap like there's a there's like a ceremonial wrap over the plate and uh they're holding what seem well they've got what seems to be like a great um like uh um like a pole hammer Okay. Like a pole hammer, with, and then on top of it uh, is, again, uh, this sort of, like... Uh, the, the, there's a pole hammer, but the back of it is, like, again, like a bladed uh, bat wing. Oh, uh, cool. And then uh, <clears throat> the top of it is this, like, gnarly hooked spike that looks like a tooth. So, you know, a, a crow's beak on the end of a, a pole. It's yeah. pretty based. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly that. Um, and yeah, they are in front of this, in front of this dark wood door. And uh, they don't make any motion to you when you approach. I will, I will nod my head to him and say, uh, "Greetings. Uh, would it be possible to have a word with your uh, lady queen um, of Havre?" What is your name? I'm Valmir of Kensek. And uh thought maybe uh I could pass on my respect for one of Havre who travelled with us for a time but unfortunately fell at the second summit. Um Thought perhaps your your queen would like to know about um, this gentleman and how he made an impression uh, upon the world and raised the profile check. of Havre quite heavily. Well, a persuasion check. Okie dokie. Dokie, I heard a chokey. Uh, 22. 22, nice. Uh... The knight uh, sort of nods. Please wait one moment. Goes in. After about three minutes, um, you are let in. 
Um, and in this lodge is, it's, it's interesting. It's very dark decor, a very, you know, classic vampire in that kind of everything's black and goth. However, a lot of the fixtures are of this rough stone, uh, almost like sandstone. And it's like thick gray, deep gray sandstone that a lot of the, um, like the, the statues and stuff are, are carved out of. And some of the walls are kind of lined with as well. And, uh, the, again, there's these big plumes of sort of like yellow cutting through black, black being the main theme, but then like yellow is the highlight color, which, um, you're pretty good at history. I won't say it needs a check. You would know that a lot of the kingdoms of Nardathel each have like their own assigned color. Yellow would be Havaray's, essentially. And what you know about Havaray is it is a desert climate for a lot of Havaray. Um, uh, but uh, it has very interesting weather patterns that mean that sun doesn't always reach certain parts of the kingdom. Um, either way, I. Uh, you are... Adam's family plus yellow. Adam's family live in the desert. Uh, is, is the vibe. Anyway, similar... But the actual like layout of rooms is very similar to the Othraian ones. It's almost like there was a... Each, each one was given a lodge of the exact same size and then they were told to decorate it themselves. Um, kind of is, is the vibe that we're going for here. Um, give me a quick just perception check as well. Can do. Because a uh, certain cabinet catches your eye. I'm going to roll point of luck on that one. Cool. Can do. Uh, 21. Not a huge thing. But there is... Where you... Where a window is toward... What would be towards the outside. Um, there's like a big stained glass window and it has a lot of... It has like a, a scene about the creation of Havaray. Uh, or like the founding of the kingdom I have around it. But to the right of each side of that window sort of archway, there seems to be like these cabinets. And it's a certain cabinet of curiosities with like weird things like bones and like uh, skulls of creatures that don't quite look human and um, skins of animals that you haven't seen as well as like some uh, like scientific jars with other elements in it and then the other thing that catches your eye is in the center of the window there is this uh female character um that is being sort of heralded uh there's no sort of whereas all of the other kingdoms have this very chevalier style saints and everything there was just this singular woman that is being depicted uh, religiously here after a while, would, though. Would I recognize the woman at all, potentially? Um, from what you know about Havaray just generally is that um, they don't believe in the Chevalion. They believe in this thing called the Sanguine Ossery. Um, okay. Which is... So it's, it's not Nocturna. It's not Nocturna, no. It's not... Well, there are some who don't like that religion that obviously tend to try and link the founding blood mother of the Sanguine Ossery uh, to various malignant deities. Um... However, no, it's it's its own it's its own character. It's basically one of the first queens of all. Uh, basically, the royal family of Havaray were afflicted with a malediction, and by a lot of it in and the law goes that they essentially turned their back on the darkness that came with it and used it as a power to protect its people. Okay. Um, 
Does the figure in the glass resemble the queen at all? Fair amount. Fair amount. Fair enough. But eventually, uh, it, you see the, the queen does um, appear. Uh, you, she's got very long red hair tied up at the moment, and she is in this sort of thin silken robe um, that kind of comes like is open there all the way down to like the center of the sternum. Um, and it's like this thin flowing like black uh, robe with like little little bits of like yellow like sewing like uh, stitching so it creates like a, a highlighted checked pattern all the way through uh, into some sort of flowing lines and stuff and then um, she also has like somewhat pale skin um and yeah, like kind of burning red eyes. Uh, it's a big sort of first thing you know about her. Is, notice about her is that just she's wearing like small spectacles that kind of hide the hue a little bit because they're like blue tinted glass on the on the spectacles. But behind those, like the pupil of her eye is like sharp red. Um. Like fresh blood, kind of sharp red. The um, kind that I would recognize as coming from James as well would have similar. Yes, very much so. Um, Majesty, it's a, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Uh, I'm Valmar Kensek. I uh, have been invited by the uh, the king of uh, not the Nathil, um to investigate some of the goings on in the kingdom as of late and I'm not putting any suspicion on anyone um, at this point just thought I'd do the meet and greet do the rounds and get to know everybody and um, the reason I came to you first is because I um, was privileged to for a time um travel with somebody who comes from Havere, um, a gentleman by the name of James Augustine Willoughby, um, exceptionally talented in uh, the arts of alchemy and medicine, and uh, unfortunately he met his end at the Second Summit, defending people from a heinous evil, and I was privileged to call him a friend and I would like to pay my respects to his queen and I guess thank you for being the the, the patron and, and, and sovereign of such a incredible person. I remember Mr. Willoughby. We met for the first time at the summit. I am sad to hear that he passed during its calamitous end thank you for your your words and thank you for undertaking what uh, uh, and uh, uh, a task as to finding out what is going on I do hope and she says this with a more critical line of questioning I do hope that you are more open minded than others of this realm who would default the blame to scions of my and denizens of my kingdom I will make a, a gesture of Hot, that look at me. Um, uh, I am of the opinion that shunning a, an entire people for reasons not of their control and doing is uh, something rather small minded and useless. Had enough of it of my of myself, and there's 
no reason to continue that uh, that pain uh, onto others. She gives a very coy smile, Valmin. I am delighted to hear such a thing. <laughs> May I offer you a drink at all? I would be delighted. Yes, please. Is a red wine oh, fine with right. you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give a coy smile back and say, that sounds delightful. And um, she um, she gestures to um, one of her like servants um, who goes to uh, a small wine rack and corks a bottle uh, and uh, pops a bottle of wine and serves in these sort of like uh, fine crystal chalices. It's a, it looks to be a very expensive bottle of red wine. I will I will sip as one does as a a noble drinking wine mm -hmm. would. It's we're, good not, wine. We're, not, we're not gonna we're not going to gulp down like like mm -hmm. commoners. But, uh... So, uh, tell me more of this uh, individual of uh, my kingdom that uh, served so well, so that I may also, f well, should your stories be great enough, choose to honor them in my own way. Well, uh, the group that we were uh, a part of um, had come to a bit of a, a a fork in the road let's say um, the and and he was one of the only ones that traveled with me to uh, the um, why am I blanking on the name of the kingdom of the elves it's uh, Elijah Empire there you go um, I kept trying to say Elendor, and I was like, no, that's something else. Um, he was one of the only ones that traveled with me to the Eladrin Empire when we learned of the the plague known as, as Black Lung that afflicts the elves. Um, we had heard that uh, that may be something that would get a bit worse in the near future. And he wanted to help. He wanted to prevent that from coming to pass. And if possible, he wanted to attempt to cure the elves of this evil affliction that they were suffering from. And this was at a time where not too long before that, we had fought against the elves um in in our goal of you know saving the world and such from the dragons and all of that going on but he chose to come to the Eladrid empire even though he was ostensibly a a subject of an enemy of that empire because he wanted to help and that drive to help was far stronger than anything else that was going on for him. Um, unfortunately, he fell before he managed to complete his research and complete a cure, but the research that he had accomplished will, I hope, go some way into furthering, you know, the, the, the search for a cure in the future. It's taken far too soon. Some of us from Hathaway are given more life than we perhaps deserve. Others not enough. What do you know of both the Chevalier and uh, Sanguinosary? Lord Kensick. Uh I, of of the Sanguinostri, regrettably little. I am um, 
while I have become well traveled in the past year or so, how long have we? How long has this campaign been going on? Uh, in game lore years, I don't know. Uh, we're um, we're into the, the. It's been at least over a year. Yeah. In the past little over a year, um, I have been quite well traveled. Uh, but before that, I had spent vast majority of my time underground and not well traveled at all and while I have had education on the various religions of of the world it's it's merely that a a education knowledge rather than an experience in the chevalier they reward knights and denizens of the faith with honorifics sandhoods normally those who live a pious life there has only ever been two knights of Havere to meet make it to sanctification to be chosen for beatification the denizens of my kingdom's maledictions often force those who would work in good stead and piety to not be pure enough to make it to sainthood so we have the sanguinosary where we honor our own if you could one day make a case before the ossery itself about Mr. Willoughby I feel he should have I feel his name should be remembered and it would get my endorsement but on to your actual investigation Whilst it is nice to hear of one of my own. You have other reasons of being here. I can sense it. So, what do you need to know? Do. What do I need to do um, to clear my name? Well, like I said, at the moment there isn't any suspicion being thrown on any specific people. Uh, and certainly if I had suspicions of, of a single person, I would wouldn't have gone to them first. But what we do know is that there is someone among the council, someone in this castle right now, who had under the initial of P, or pseudonym beginning with P, um, acquired a an assassin from the thing that I forgot, the the Black Brotherhood, something along those lines. It was a Black um, Mark Assassin. Black Mark Assassin. Um, they acquired a Black Mark Assassin to shut a portal to the Abyss while myself and my companions were on the other side. Um, this happened just after the recent trouble with the Blood River thing going on. And, uh, well, that assassin basically told us that this P individual was the one signing the order, and that he was a member of this court. And so the aim is to find out who this individual is. Can I roll an perception check while I... Oh. Speak all of that. What are you trying to perceive about? Just the perceiving? reception to the reception to the um, fact that I was in the abyss. Mm. Uh, to um, me saying about we know that this person is at the court. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, 
vibe check? Is she surprised? Is she like, oh shit, you've rented the abyss? Damn, that's hot. Kind of thing, you know? <laughs> okay, sure. Go for, a, go for a perception. 11. You're getting... It's one of those things of like... She... She kind of leans in and is very enthralled by your um what you're investigating is kind of very very curious into it all like there is she's fixed like she's hanging off every word that should have been insight not perception but it's the same modifier so it's still 11 predatory <laughs> <laughs> She's very... Do I feel... Can I insight myself? Am I being charged? Do you charged? feel safe? <laughs> Am I safe right now? Um, that's up to you. It's one of those things where she's, she's hanging off every word. It's like... So you think there's a traitor in our very court? There's like... There's an element of joy in how she says that. It's like... Uh, this is fun. And essentially, I, I and my companions are attempting to ascertain who this person is, ascertain who their contacts are, and ha try and find a way to put a stop to them. Because, I mean, they have to have an evil plan. They worship Null. It's kind of, I think, goes to the territory. And, you know, for the people who we uh, find among this court with certain sets of skills uh, that may aid us in our investigations, um, I'm going to try and acquire their aid in, in making this investigation go swiftly, because we can't all stay in a castle forever. That would be uh, quite claustrophobic after a time. I don't know. I kind of like tight spaces. How do you think I can help? Oh my god. <laughs> Big what? titty goth mommy. Absolutely my type. <laughs> mommy, sorry. Mommy, sorry. Mommy, what? sorry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What? And what skills do I have, do you think, that will aid your investigation? Dominating. <laughs> well, uh. So I, I, forgive me, I have not outside of the there, obvious. There's a, there's a joke about her also hating running water in there somewhere. Same! Same! We're the same! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, don't get this. They never have a beach holiday together, let's put it that way. Um. Okay, yeah. outside of the obvious, and pointing at maybe yeah. who has the name beginning with P, I'm. Not sure what you need me to do. I, I'm sure you're way ahead of me there in your investigation. Well, as I said, you were the the first person that I've personally gone to meet with, and my companions are meeting with other um, various individuals. And uh, while I am, I'm not going to make assumptions on various, you know, skills and abilities that various people of the court have uh, obviously with you yourself being a queen and somebody of quite high prestige and someone I assume with servants that have ears that close to the ground the ability to get that kind of information if there is anything suspicious I Well, you have free reign to ask any member of my court any questions you may ask. They will answer honestly. And I have certain skills that might benefit. If uh... your friend is as
If his blood is of Havaray, as you say, then I think you already have an idea of where I may be of service if you need me. Therefore, I would be happy to help in certain elements of the investigation, should it come up. I will uh, not... That would... I, I have obviously spent quite a bit of time with uh, James and know of his condition and but I would not presume to know faculties of, of any, any other that I am you know not familiar with but I, certainly if you have a similar set of skills then that would be of great aid Really, yes, you use the word condition I prefer gift. That is a fantastic way of phrasing it. Well, do let me know. Is there anything else you'd like to ask? Come in. Spare bottle? Goddamn. <laughs> Great wine. I'll, if you would like another drink, you can have another drink. <laughs> uh, Boys is very strong, though, so constitution text will start coming in. <laughs> Um, I look forward to speaking with you again during this uh, time that we're all confined here to the castle. So the aesthetic of this room is definitely the nicest that I have seen in my time in the castle so far. The vibes. Oh, exquisite. <laughs> I look forward to speaking to you as well, Lord Kensick. And that you can leave. Deep, deep bow and exit. No problem. Right, gang. I'll do a neck neck check. This I I'm good. We're here. It's just you've got a giant hole where a proboscis is stuck into your neck. Oh, no, no, wait, no, 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 no. <laughs> Right, gang. So we wind the clock to the first quarter of the investigation. Uh, you. You regroup. Where do you guys want to set up as like your regrouping location? Do you want to? Where Where would you like to run this investigation out of? Hmm. Which part of the castle? Looking at the map, I mean, there's various empty towers that we could use that don't hmm. have anything going on for them. Maybe we could like have one of them or I don't know if there's some rooms that just so or maybe maybe you could go you've... to Magister's lab you've also been assigned chambers you're muted like I am sorry. the joke if we just go full murder mister with it we're gonna meet in the royal observatory <laughs> you want to you can do there's no there's not gonna be anybody in there and we're gonna be able to discuss it and tell them we're not allowed to discuss it anymore, in which case there's gonna be somebody waiting to listen in the Royal Observatory. That's that's just yeah, that's just murder mystery writing. You know, a load of wizards are gonna come in whilst you're like underneath the telescope, someone's gonna fall out the tower. <laughs> As long and as you... we don't discuss it at night, we're fine. Because nobody yeah. should be using the Royal Observatory in the middle of the day. Yeah, I know, exactly. Okay. But no, we also we also have bedrooms. Yes, bedrooms. You bedrooms. have rooms. Also, uh, I would say you could probably use the council court when that's not in session. You know, that little smaller room that you met everyone in. Um, you, you guys in can have, obviously, your own room, and I will go back to the Queen of Havre. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, Ruby and... Valme, as you make your way back, are you going? Well, okay, just so because I need to try and work out pathing. Um, where are you all going to meet? Where are you planning to meet? Uh, I mean, if this is leading into night, and we're not going to try and do any investigating during the night. Then, so that would be the afternoon gone. I would say there's like evening dinner next is like the next period, and then it would be night. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe we meet at. Chambers. 
And if, we, if, we go, if we're going to afternoon dinner, and that's going to be in the Great Hall, the Council Court's going to be the nearest place. It doesn't Are need people... to be necessarily efficient. I don't imagine this place is so huge that we're fighting for the minute here. All right. All right. Um, okay. Yeah, you would be on ground floor chambers in the, the, the south there. Um, you do know that food is being brought, dinner is being brought to people's chambers. Right, um, yes, that's being delivered. It's not in the Great Hall. Um, okay, so you'd be going through... So, um, Ruby and Valmer, one of you, either both make perception checks or one of you get, get advantage, and then Breton, you make a perception check because obviously you're transiting across the castle at this time. Uh, I want to see if you notice anything. 13. The way you're going. 19. Um, Breton, as you're crossing the from the chambers, uh, sorry, from the office of the steward out down into the courtyard near the stables, uh, you hear a horse really whinnying. Like, um really sort of uh, struggling. That sounds unusual. That seems like it's worth investigating. So you head over to the stable and uh, you see like a stable hand really struggling to keep a horse under control. It's like, uh, down go, down! Looking at the horse, uh, I have to assume this seems to be like what would normally be a very well-trained horse. Oh yeah, is this, this a is this a war mount this, or is this, this like is a, a uh... this is a war horse? This is a war horse that has been spooked and these things from... are literally trained not to be spooked. Yeah, and um, from your perception, it's like avoiding one half of its uh, pen. Yeah, Brighton will just kind of settle down over and start... Imagine if he's leaving for the offices of the, st the steward, then he'd probably be making his way down the stairs towards where the stable would be. Yeah. Uh, so he's just going to kind of sidle in towards the back of the stable, kind of looking back and forth. Uh, how many mounts are in here? This is a... Like, how big are these stables? This is a big set of stables. This is, like, enough for, like... So there's like the horses of various like of the various king's courts, etc. There's um there's like enough for the household guard as well. So we're talking like three hundred horses. So, yeah, there's 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 this this play, and the some... scale of this map does not do to the size of what is actually being kept inside of it. Uh we're talking massive buildings here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the citadel is big. It is. Yeah. Like, the, like on this map, it's like, yeah, the stable's a really small building. The stable's a football field, just in the middle yes. of this keep. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's something we gotta we gotta. It's really important. Like we maybe needed a ruler on the bottom here to really understand just yeah, sorry, the scale I mean... of this place. That's fine. <laughs> um, like the the scepter of the great lady is in itself like like kind of cathedrally sized mm -hmm. like it is this sure. is this place is well it's, it's like you know there are towns it's that are Westminster smaller than the Citadel. yeah it's westminster abbey yeah 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 absolutely it is like this is yeah this is big mm -hmm. okay that 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 helps a little bit uh then i'm gonna just ask one clarify question uh obviously one horse is freaking out about the stable that it is in are any of the other animals like the ones that are adjacent to it do they also seem to be showing like trying to avoid the area that this horse is freaking out about or is it just this one horse that is uh the stool next to out? it is actually free so okay. uh, as a note um my big lizard is horse-sized and would be in the stable yeah okay so it's not it's not just horses in there. No, there's, is there no, anything no, no. else other than? There's absolutely like, other things in there other than the horses. It's just majority horses. Yeah, it's it's gonna lead into something I'm gonna try and do at the rookery later. Don't you worry. Um, 
Nice. So Brenton will just kind of approach up towards uh, the boy and that is trying to like the staple boy that is trying to wrangle this horse and just say, um, "You seem to be having some trouble." Uh, yeah, uh, sorry. With you won't, it won't calm down. And um, yeah, Brenton, you notice that like the side of the pen that it's avoiding is. Uh, there's like a bucket, a mop, and then like a hay feeder. Um, it's like a hanging hay feeder, and like it would be like the point at which you would normally um, hitch the horse to. Like it would be that side of the, the the pen that it's like refusing to go near. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, why don't you pull it out of the pen? Maybe move it over towards this uh, free pen that's next to it. Uh, just to get it to calm down. Right, right, yeah. Um, the groom's just, uh, the stable hand just pulls it out. As soon as it pulls it towards the courtyard, like to where you've kind of come from, like out of the dock, it's, the horse instantly kind of calms down. It's just going to kind of like make his way kind of around this pen. Uh, I imagine if there's just uh, padding on the floor, so it's just kind of like brushing things away with his feet, giving it a good once over. It's like, what is this thing freaking out about? What is what was spooking this horse? Mm -hmm. um, then doesn't seem to be anything in the floor directly. Um, but give me another perception check. It's like, if there's nothing in the floor, was it the stable that was next to it that was empty? Is there something in that one that it just saw over? Or, uh, sure, we'll make a perception check. Uh, that's a 25. Cool. Um, you do look over into the other stable, and something does catch your eye. Some of the feed in the pen across from it uh, seems to be like burnt, scalded, like a big feeder of hay, and then you see in the like to bottom of it, some of the hay is like blackened, almost like it was on fire. Bottom of the hay feeder has been blackened. The hay itself didn't just catch a blaze, and hay should go up like a fucking tinderbox if it's dry. And so if this, if these are hay feeders. I mentioned the time period that'd be gravity fed, so there's no way that it wouldn't burn up. So why the hell did only the bottom get burned? Uh, you'll kind of lean over the, uh, the edge towards where the, where the assuming the stable boy is still here, say, uh, how long have you been trying to calm them down for? Oof. Last, last, last ten minutes or so, I, uh, heard it from inside of the, in, in the offices. It's, we're, we're now very understaffed. It's just me and my father. We've had to get rid of the rest because of the lockdown, you see. Um. Ten minutes. Did you smell anything out of the ordinary? Smoke? Um. Uh, it was a bit of a metallic smell through the. Uh, when I was walking towards the, the pens, but it's, I thought it was just. We get all sorts of nights and things. I thought it was just armor polish or something. Hmm. Metallic, metallic. Right. Well, not as a few times. Uh, that's going to be his uh, first instinct. There is now. So he's going to divine sense. Sure. Um, uh, divine sense is devil, uh, fiends, celestials, undead. <laughs> uh, I doubt this area has been consecrated or desecrated specifically. No. So, uh, is anything within sixty feet of him? There's no creatures within 60 feet of you. Um, I just need to look at the definite wording of divine sense. Mm. If it's... You do... You do t 
detect something, however. There's like a... You get... The kid said metallic, and then when you sense, mm -hmm. you get a strong, almost like mercurial taste in your mouth. Um, coming to you from the hay bale itself. Like there's something in there, maybe. Uh, I suppose with that, uh, he's not going to root around inside of it. He's just going to, assuming he can be just shifted over, he's just going to up, like turn it over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the side and just kind of like, I, he'll even use the Damal to just like scrape some of the, uh, the hay out and see what turns out. Yeah, sure. Um, you see a... You hear it first. You hear like a ting, ting, ting of metal hitting the ground, hitting like the, mm -hmm. the, the, the floor. Even though it's like a hay-covered like floor, or it's kind of thing, there's still enough of a, a weight to this object that it you know, makes a little bit of a thud and a clink. Uh, and you find a... What looks to be just a... like egg like metal shape just falls out probably pocket size like ovular uh but it's kind of not like fully 3d egg it's kind of flattened and it's not blood sore no this is like a okay. this is like a bright burnished bronze color blood bronze uh well, that leads into uh, Brighton is a smith, so he would have some understanding of metallurgy. Would he know what this is? Uh, give me a history check. History. We have this some is, knowledge of history. This is just, a... We'll just keep rolling these good dice until uh, yeah, one of them but... comes up. A four. It's a six. It's a ten. Oh, uh... We do have that inspiration. I, I would argue uh... this might be worth it. We could research more into it. I think the inspiration, there might be more times that we can look into it. Also, it, give it another minute or two. Breton's probably going to flag the both of you down so you can look at it too. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, it looks to be... Um... It's more just trying to identify the metal. Presumably a metal yeah. would be fairly easy to identify. It looks bronzy. It it looks kind of bronzy, kind of, but coppery. It's very bright, kind of, almost like a... Imagine you took, like, copper color and mixed, like, rose gold into it. Mm-hmm. So it's some kind of alloy. Some sort of alloy, yeah. Uh, it didn't ping as infernal, but it's it's definitely wrong. Uh, he'll just tell the uh, simple boy... Uh, Bonded another soul. I think something just spooked it on this one. Yeah, well, right, you are, Sir Knight. Um, but thank you, thank you for your help. Mm. And then uh, he's a. Uh, I'm assuming uh, do the stables uh, are there open shuttered windows, like you get most stables, where it's like yeah. they've got the uh, the with the bars. Uh, he's just gonna make his way toward. He's just gonna like poke his head out towards it and uh, just kind of keep an eye on the road because if. Uh, both uh, Ruby and Valmy are making their way towards the chambers. He'd be not super visible, but I mean, he is wearing glowing armor, just kind of silhouetted yeah, in yeah. one of these windows. Um, <laughs> if you if you guys are regrouping at the chambers, then they you definitely see eventually see him. But I think you were going to the council chamber. Uh, uh, the council I think court. the I think the point was made since we're taking food in our room. There's no reason to meet in the council court because it's right, not like we need to be enough. in the great hall okay. afterwards. That's fair yeah. enough. Now that we also know how big the scale of this place is, it might actually take us a few minutes to get from one place to oh, another. Oh yeah, no, it is. Yeah, this is this is a big site. Um, We're going on a walk. Where are we going? The next door over. Yeah, this is this is designed that people could live in this location for, I think, two yeah. years under siege. Yeah. So All right, it, is, it is a it is a big old castle. Um, but sure. Um, yeah, okay. Eventually you guys see Breton in the stables. I'm here and uh, Ruby. Howdy. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, I'll 
pass on whatever information I have about, you know, Queen of Havre. And uh, King Bastion is willing to help us. Uh, recommended that he we find a way to make him invisible. If we were going to interrogate anybody, but he is willing to listen in our conversations and determine how he's lying. The Queen did hint at having the same vague powers as James has. And, I mean, one of the things that James was able to do was touch an object and see its heinous histories. I think one thing I might want to try and do is bring her the letter signed by P. Did we actually get... Did he have that on him, the assassin? Did he have the letter with the contract with the P? Yeah, we have it. Yeah, We have it? I would like to bring that to her to see if she has specifically that ability. If she gets a vision of, I don't know, Sir Pratt signing it, then boom, we got Sir Pratt dead to rights, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't think it'd be that easy, but... The grim psychometry. Yeah. Um, so, point of order. The... Uh, I'm assuming that you mentioned that, uh, like, Philip is here. So the fact yeah. that there is a there is another notable P name that has now been at each place that has had an incident uh, is brought to the table. Um, Suddenly, oh, no. he starts spelling it with an F. Yes, uh, Breton. I imagine Breton is kind of standing in the stable. Like there's no like there's no explanation for why Breton is just standing in this random horse stable as they walk in and just start expositing to him. Uh, he is going to uh, using the tongs from his blacksmithing kit because I sure. have a blacksmithing yeah, kit. Yeah, certain. He's going to lift this uh, this piece of metal and just kind of hold it over the ledge. He's like, I don't suppose either of you have any hell idea, hellish idea, what the hell this is. Because whatever it is, it was given one of the horses a fright. Ruby will take her true sight down and give it a good look. I will, I will give it a, an, an schniff as a child of various devilish demoniness. Devil identify! Demonic. You're going to cast Identify? Or ritually. Okay. So in 10 I minutes, think you can gonna... spare the spell slot if you if you can if you can cast it as a normal pace. Oh, fine, I'll cast it the normal way. <sighs> Listen, it's it's already been suspicious. Breton's been standing here waiting for you all to show up. Do we really want to take ten minutes in the stables? Just <laughs> she's gonna put her true sight glasses on, take a look around, and then she'll cast identify. Sure. Uh, you while, don't see anything. That... True sight. Okay. While that ten minute castiness is not, going on, I'm not doing ten minutes. I'm just gonna do the identify. Is is um, my big lizard in this specific stable? Uh, it would be prob so. This chunk is for all of like the household cavalry horses. Yours would be in like the slightly larger pens uh, for like exotic mounts that various kingdoms have brought with them, um, including like you know griffins and hippogriffs and things like that that are also stabled here um i i will just say to him uh to keep an eye out for anything suspicious because maybe someone is trying to spook the horses with weird strange metal things and if you've seen anything uh let me know sure um this is let me just get up how much info i can give you with identify um Oh my god. That's great spelling there, Alex. <laughs> I don't want to talk about how I just typed the word identify, which just was not English. Um, sure. Uh, this, this item is a magically imbued piece of simmer bronze. We've heard that before. Uh, take your word for that one. I think the I think the I think uh, the, the the Iron Duke had mentioned that as one of the metals that may have been used in the construction of 
It wasn't the discretion of celestial gold. It was something. This that this is not the first time we've heard about Simmer Bronze. It is not. Um, Simmer Bronze. Elemental is. Yes, Simmer Bronze is an ally of Ignum Brass and Bronze. Uh, with obsidian sand used in the flux, it's found in the city of brass, or yeah, produced in no the city metal. of brass. Oh, it's fire, the elemental plane of fire. Um, yeah, this is one of the potential it, things that thought that might go into the crafting of uh, true, like celestial, mm -hmm. uh, the, the true, the metal that we needed to forge. Yep, and it was also found as part of the coating for the corrupted version of the gate. Uh, mm -hmm. the portal gate thing. Uh, this has been magically imbued. Uh, however, it is... Ironically, it's not technically infernal, then. That would make it elemental. Yes, sorry, it's elemental, not infernal. Um, I Fire, my brain went infernal with fire. I meant elemental, mm -hmm. fire elemental. Um... Brighton is an expert on that, so I think. Uh -huh. Yeah, yep. no, absolutely. That's literally, fair. literally, why he no. became a watcher was elemental yeah. shit. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's an elemental metal. Um, it has been magically imbued. However, and 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 there is a way to put it this way: the magic that. Is within it is seems to be a message in some way however it has been imbued in such a way that it can't just be read that something about it is wrong and it only It needs to be activated in some way, though the re the way to do that is unclear. This is some encrypted magic bullshit where it needs a key, but the key is what knows what the encryption is and has to tell this thing what it's supposed to be doing so that it understands what it's supposed to be doing. Found your first clue. <laughs> um, but with that find and that piece of information being dumped, we're going to go take our big and aneurysm. I can just get Beth and aneurysm describing it like that. Like, that is that is not how any of this is supposed to work. It's like a door shaped like a key, which it also a, opens another place. door, which is in itself. Oh, it's just itself. this 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 thing is the lock, but the lock doesn't know what the key looks like. The key has to tell the lock what the key looks like. Not nearly as egregious. Hey, Locke, I am what that's, the key looks like. That's oh, legitimately I mean. not too far, kind of, from the truth. Uh, that's, um, that's, that's dunk backwards logic. It's not nearly as egregious as the in order to keep the Divine Gate fixed, you have to break stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's just that's just wordplay that you all have continually gotten wrong. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we're going to take our mid <laughs> midpoint break here. So join us in 10 minutes' time, uh, and we'll see you very soon. Hey, come here a minute. Do you need royalty-free music for your TTRPG content, whether that be a YouTube video, stream, TikTok, Instagram post? Don't worry, we've got you covered. My name's Alex. I've been a content creator for almost a decade now, and I've teamed up with my good friend Harry to produce 10 royalty-free songs for you to use in your content completely for free. We've tried to make a whole range of motifs with this album, covering happy music to sad music, to mystery music to combat music. And if this takes off, you know what? we might even make some more. So give the Elendor Chronicles soundtrack volume one a shot. It's free to stream everywhere. And if you want the high quality downloads, you can come over to our Patreon and download them, or you can contact me directly at tabletop at themidgemansworld.co.uk as a creator, and I'll just give it to you for free. That's it, there's no catch. And just to prove it, we've also given you guys a user license agreement to prove that you have the complete perpetual rights to use this content. So enjoy. And Good luck on your next adventure. Oh, good day. 
I'm Martin Sanderson, and I'm the CEO of Avari Military Solutions. We here at Avari know that it doesn't take much to cause problems out on the frontier, whether that be from local pirate raids, neighboring interstellar powers, or even just an unhappy populace with unreasonable demands. Just what is a small to mid-sized regional power to do when faced with these problems? You look to Avari for your solutions. With open-ended contracts, well-trained personnel, state-of-the-art aerospace forces, and competitive rates, we stand ready to help find the right solution to your problem. So if you have a problem, why not call Avari for your solution? Our operators are waiting to take your call and consultations are free of charge. Avari Military Solutions, a solution for your problem. Avari Military Solutions is not licensed to operate within the Kark and Dre the Andes Corps, or any Class A combat zones. AMS is a subsidiary of Omni Radiance Holdings, a family company. Ah. When is a story more than a story? When a tale is more than words on paper? When is an ad more than the script it's written on? In the darkest deepest annals of our own history. Worlds of wonder and splendor burst through like a blister made of hope. And the brain that's wrestled and riddled with madness. A radiant pustule. Writing. Art. That's... Storytelling. That is the true lust of life. You too can dutifully indulge in art. Like fans of the greats, Shakespeare, King, Tolkien, Seuss, Mercer. You too can indulge through Twitch Prime. Get an extended access to a wealth of knowledge with a simple click and emotion so small that it could endlessly amount to possibilities. Embrace those feelings. Support art. Support the component cast.
Still shorter than a Primark, though, because they average 10 feet. Yes, indeed. They were. We, we were just so everyone knows what we were talking about. We were com- comparing how tall Lady <laughs> Dimitrescu is compared to a space marine. That's the investigation yeah. we got into in our off time. But we now only the back. most important discussions we'll during the break here on the component cast. A little bitch. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, <laughs> right, you have this metallic object that is imbued with a message that you can't access. We have an idea of. It's purpose. Fire. Yeah, let's not. Maybe do that. fire is the key. I mean, Brayden will point out like it was in a, it was found in a hay bale, the bottom of which, or was it the bottom of the top yeah. of which was burned? From the angle you that? saw it, it was like you saw like the bottom corner of the hay bale was burnt, where it was mm-hmm. resting, but under yeah, more inspection, more thing... of it was. So yeah. it's like it burnt things as it dropped through. So it just kind of it burned hot. It was left here. Okay. Yeah. And Ruby, can may I see it, please? Uh, Brent's been holding it with tongs, uh, with the knowledge that it is Simmerons. Would he know? Is it at least is it safe to touch? Or is it something um, where like it does just burn hot? Clearly, it's. So, let me double check. <laughs> Because that answer will largely determine whether or not he's allowing somebody else to handle it with their bare hands. Because if he's like, yeah, Ruby, here you go, take it, and it just falls through her palm and leaves a scorch mark where it was a second ago. So, any items crafted from Simmerbronze act as permanently, uh, um, as like, per- they act permanently under the same effects that steel would under the spell of heat metal. So, it's pretty be- warm. It would be owie. It would be owie. Don't touch it. Okay. Yeah, there's a good. Uh, so, so it's a good call to pick this thing up with tongs. That's mm-hmm. what I'm hearing. Ruby will then say, "Hold it for me," and she will conjure a flame in her hands underneath it and heat the thing up. Okay. Just see if it reacts to an increase in temperature. What what kind of flame are you doing? Like, uh, she has the ignite feature. Basically, I can light things on fire with just being near them with my hands. Um, yeah, how big is the flame? It's not so much the flame as it is just the, the heat of her hand. Oh. Yeah, I think for the, I think you, for you to get hot enough to, for this thing to give a damn, we would need a crucible. Let's take it to a smithy. That was actually on my to-do list. Might be worth a shot. Uh, does this place have? Oh yeah, the Crown Smithy is right there. <laughs> you say right there. That's almost half a mile away. <laughs> that's <laughs> about, just go on a stroll. It's about a twenty-minute walk. No, it's about fifteen minutes. It's, 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 it's just it's just a small hike. It's probably that. Royal Armory is there. like big enough to armor an entire army. <laughs> Again, um, I've got a blacksmith set. I've probably got something safe to store like hot metals inside oh, of. Yeah. Uh, we'll just he'll just put it in like a, a makeshift. Like again, we're gonna use the word crucible here because I mentioned he's just gonna carry one of those around in his pocket. Excuse me for a moment. Um, okay. You have you now have uh, the of like egg shaped uh, Simmerons tablet. In your storage. What would you like to do? Well, if this is getting into the next section of uh, the next block of time Mm -hmm. that we are going to use for uh, investigating. We don't all want to go over and investigate this specific thing. That's not going to be a that's not going to be a good idea. Um, I'll say Metal um, stuff is Breton's expertise, but magic yeah. is Ruby's expertise. I, I don't think I have any place looking at this thing. Like, I, I know if it's from the plane of fire, that's not my vibe. I, so, my um, I, I so. will acquire the letter. Um, I won't go straight to the Queen of Havre again, but I will grab the letter on from whoever is carrying it uh, so I can at some point go back there. 
So, Ruby will slide up next to Breton. I was thinking about invitations. If we survive all this. Do you think the King of Othre would come to our wedding, considering how the last time we had a big meeting, and will be this time too, um, some shit went down? Every time we've been involved in a meeting with more than 100 people, somebody has died. Yeah, but they got better. Not all of them. If there is a... Well, I guess in some cultures, a, a wedding without at least three deaths is considered a dull affair. I was but... going to say, at this point, people are going to say that a, a meeting with a Sunderstar involved, at least three people do not die, is considered a dull affair. <laughs> it's just holding in. Um, anyway, I think I would like to invite him and his retinue. <laughs> Brent is going to give her a look. And he just says... I can multitask. I understand. Were we de in the middle of dealing with anything else, I might entertain the idea of talking about this. We have three days to prevent the assassination of the king of our country. Okay. We're walking for 20 minutes, like... It's probably 10 from here, because you're at the stables. Okay, fine, still. We were also mentioning uh, this is going to involve us using our next time period to figure out what we're going to do, do we want two people dedicated to doing one thing? Well, okay. You are the foremost expert on the elemental, as my experience with it tends to be. Um, well, magic. magic. Yes. I think I should be there in case there is magic included. But if it turns out to be a whole lot of nothing, then I will go to the kitchens and begin carousing. Or probably tomorrow morning, I guess. What time is it? So this would be your Post. evening investigation slot. After this yeah. becomes night time, where you can choose to sleep or investigate. Um, I will say, all of you slept at a really weird time. So it's not like you need to sleep through this night. But I will say that it will be a case of some of you will start to get tired and might have to start... You might have to start skipping investigation slots with your characters, etc. Um, because also obviously... It seems like a really good idea that we have someone awake at night so that we have people who are investigating during the hours where sketchy shit is typically done because you don't want people knowing about it. Yeah. I'm not saying that we should all be awake. I'm just saying we should we should meter out when we take our sleeps. I think Split um, sleeping schedules, why not? Yeah, I think we should you know go to bed very early in the morning. Like I said, this is a time management um, scenario as much as it is an investigation. I'm like not it. against inviting the King of Arthur. In fact, I think he would be quite offended if we didn't invite him. I think as your king, he has the right to just turn up. <laughs> as your direct <laughs> okay, liege lord. Uh, no, as your direct liege lord and you being a, um, you know, a noble of his realm. I think he if can he makes a joke up. about Prima Noctra, I will arm wrestle him. <laughs> He's too old I'm gonna that. go to the rookery. So I mean, if if it, if Bren's going to the Crown Smithy, Beth's going to sorry, uh, Ruby's going to the kitchens. The rookery is like between the two of them, so we're all generally the same area, but going to different places. So I'm gonna go to the rookery. Uh, if you're going to the rookery, uh, I've been looking for Bright Quill. He's the guy who runs the place. Apparently, he does some. Uh, luxury exporting on the side to line his own pockets and I was told that uh, if you manage to find any of these neat little ne nest eggs he hides in the rookery uh, you might be able to well he's not going to be happy about it but he's probably going to be very eager to get that back that's good to know extortion nice blackmail even better <laughs> Brent is just again Brent's blank stare is just becoming a recurring theme here he's like <laughs> you know those weren't in my paladin oath but uh, whatever else you decided to, to swear yourself to oh, yeah, uh, I'm sure it's all about that the greater good uh huh uh huh 
Yeah, it's, for the that's, greater good. It's for the greater good. You go into Aureus's <laughs> lair, you all missed it, but like in the pile of all like the, the, the dragon horde and stuff, there's just like a bronze statued person, <laughs> like some, some sort of crusty juggler. Um, you know, Earl almost told me you... that the secret to upholding your oaths is just creativity. And to this day, I choose not to believe him. <laughs> well, how do you think the dragons acquire all of this wealth through jihad? Anyway, moving on from that topic. Okay. So, Breton, you're going to the smithy. Um, yeah, I think it, Ruby was going to go with the smithy just at least for a period of time to yeah. determine what's more important in figuring out how this works: metal, car metal craft, or arcana. Sure. 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 Um, and Ruby, you said you were, are you going with, sorry, Ruby, are you going with him or are you going to the Kitchen's Bake House and Brewery? I'm going to go with him first and then I'll go. The, if, if it turns out I have no, no, no further input there, I will go to the Kitchen's. It is an awkward thing where it's like, we didn't establish a concept of splitting our time between two places. Yeah. I will we, say, we will this can easily, this is, far this takes then. This is something that could also be easily like Brighton is dedicating his time to the egg to determine whether or not Metalcraft or Arcana he, is more important. If he determines Arcana is more important, then he's going to use his time to pass that info to Ruby. The, the intent for how this mini game is working is you allocate yourself to go to a space for that period. I have an idea. So splitting time is more like you'd have to split up as people. Let me look how long it lasts. I have an now idea. Now I feel like I'm playing Arkham Horror. Uh. Yeah, that's kind of where the vibe's coming from. That's that's <laughs> it's it. The the idea I took that a lot of the creation of this from was Arkham Horror, Cluedo, kind of those investigative board games that were a little bit more. The things were presented in front of you rather than you having to make investigation. Jokes. I think Beth's about to explode. She's going to explode. Have an idea. Okay. Oh my gosh, Breton. I'll meet you in the, in the armory. I'm going back to the stables where that thing was. It was, it was in a hay bale, right? Yes. I have an idea. And she's going <laughs> to... Not, not quite full sprint, but she's going <laughs> to... Okay. Her does, idea... that mean she's, does that mean she's spending the entirety of this next time in the stables? We will no. See. What she's going to do is she's going to get there. Uh, she's going to go where, where it was hidden. And cast alarm. Just around where it is, where it was. Excuse mm -hmm. me. Presumably, somebody left it there, which means somebody might come back to get it. You know, that was another good point. I was, I was legitimately thinking of just leaving Solvril in the stall next to it. If you want to have done that, you also can. But I didn't say that, and Ruby yeah. did not share the idea. So I, Brett is going to make. Actually, that's ruined the idea. Because Breton's other idea was to see if he could convince the rookery guy to let Solvaril just nest atop the rookery. Right. Solvaril is obvious. To keep... Well, to well, be fair, yeah, Valmy has already, just a Valmy has already I, I, asked I, I, his mount to keep an eye out at the stables. Yeah. Yeah. And if you if you have that to go for the rookery, I, I'll... You know, we're walking in the same direction, like on the way to the smithy and the rookie, same place. So if you say that while we're going that way, I I can go do uh, an, a a different. Uh, no, 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 place. you're you're good. It's it, that was more an idea too. That was just gonna like it. It would let him understand that people are sending letters. And Silveril is not so intelligent that he'd understand purpose and subterfuge. Uh, speaking with him makes more sense. And this is this is a much better lead. You can, but yes, you can put the alarm spell on that area. I will allow that. Um, now the thing is, I'm aware if somebody goes in there, but depending how far away I am, by the time I get back, that person may already be long gone. Oh, well, that's what the, uh, that's what the mount is for. Oh, you think Solveril's gonna tie him down? No, I mean, uh, Valmir's mount is in the stables. If there's a ping, he can immediately see who was in the stables. That's true. Or at the very okay. least, uh, sorry, maybe not C, but he can, uh, no, I can double check that, because that's, uh, that's one that I, you don't typically use Fine Steed, like Fine Familiar, but I think you do have the ability to share vision with it. I think it's a ranger thing. 
let's double check that because that is a spell that is on my spell list. That's something we could really use right now. Uh, while within one mile, you can communicate. So at the very least, like Valmir could just ask, like, "Oh, hey, there's a ping there." You all would have to stay together for that to work. Yes, you would. Within one mile, is this place no? That big? If if you're getting pinged with alarm, uh, how would you tell Valmir, "Hey, who's in the stable right now?" Unless you and Valmir were together. I can cast sending. You can cast sending. All right, that works. This place is probably about a mile, just below a mile square. That's to explain the size okay. of it all. Mm -hmm. That's so as long as you're not in the office of the high guard or the other far extremes, we should be within well. I would a mile. say a spell within a mile will tower to tower will be fine. Sure, I I, I will have right. relocated um, Sturka into a stable that has vision on that stall. I like, it's like the idea. you know. Across the way, and like seventeen stables over. I, I, <laughs> this, is, this is almost surveillance. I, yeah, I like the idea that you guys got essentially to the royal armory across like the the courtyard. So this big courtyard is also to to explain the courtyard where the stables are outside of Clarence's Keep. There's also like a training area. It's like there's horse practice grounds. Like it, it like it, it for like formation to form up the cavalry and stuff. It's a big courtyard. I like the idea that you guys get to the other end of it and then go. Wait. <laughs> and all, like, run back. Um, but okay. So. Brenton's going to keep going. This is not something that requires him to go running back. Brenton's going to yes. the crown smithy. Final confirmation. Yeah. Ruby, are you going with? It's going to go to the alarm first, then go to the smithy. That was taken into that. Okay, you're going to the crown smithy. And then, Valmy, you're going to the rookery. Okay, let's do yeah. crown smithy first. Um... You enter the crown smithy, and so this is um, currently mostly empty. Um, the bellows aren't blowing, the, but what you get the idea of this is essentially a, a full workshop production forge that would normally be arming the entire city watch and more than that, but because they can't export, and they don't have like day orders outside of maybe fixing something, fixing a fastening or doing some shoes for a horse that's inside. There's actually no production. Plus, most of the smiths have been thrown out. It's only the, the, the master of like the forge that is left. And um, at this time, they also do not seem to be in the smithy. The smithy is completely empty. Um, <laughs> But it is a very, very well kept and large forge with like, there's like racks upon racks of like pole arms and half completed plate armors, etc. Um, there's a forge, there's multiple anvils, there's a powered hammer. So like there's a, uh, what seems to be like a pneumatic hammer as well, um, using some sort of uh, piston technology. It looks very no mission design. Um, looks like it's been brought over from uh, Probably Lager's from Legorong's land. land, or Havare also does has have a big shelts population, so it could be part of that. Mm. Um, and yeah, you are in a fort. You have essentially you could. Um, they also they don't seem to do any like ingot smelting here. This looks to be a lot of the import metal and then rework metal. But there are, like, plenty of ingots, and obviously there will be a uh, forge to be able to reheat metals, etc. So, <clears throat> as I'm thinking about this, um, this may have been something that we kind of stepped our bounds on, but it realized this item is already very naturally hot. If it responds to excess heat, and that was what required to activate it, that would make it a very poor dead drop item. Because that would mean the only way you could listen to the message would be to take it to the forge. I'm wondering if it is heat based. Is this more about cooling it down than heating it up? If I were going to hide a very hot object, hay would not be my first instinct. As hay can burn very easily. It's I'm, entirely possible this is something we don't need to be focusing on at all. Yes, but, well, but at the end of the day, it is <clears throat> it is a 
it is something of unusual nature that has popped up. And my first thought is, rather than stick it in the forge, uh, Breton is just going to... He's going to carefully remove it. He's going to sit on his tongs. And he's he's going to dunk it in one of the quenching barrels. Sure. Are you going for... What kind of quench are you going for? There's uh, multiple barrels. So like, there's a water quench, there's an oil quench. Um, there's a holy water quench. <laughs> Let's start with normal water and work our way up. Please don't put the hot steam, the hot item into the oil barrel. Oil doesn't combust like that. It explodes. I've played enough video games to know what happens. Also, <laughs> Only if it's in a red barrel. Oil, <laughs> oil is a effective way of quenching metal, depending on the type of metal. Um, and it, it's not, yeah. it's not, it's, it's not the same oil. Yeah. It's the same way. Even if you can shoot oil. a gas tank and it won't explode, you need a spark for that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> It's also, I don't think it is the same as crude oil. It's like acids and stuff that they call oils. I'm making a joke. Calm down, you freaking <laughs> evil loving nerd. I, 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 I was going to say, and I'm, and I'm being blacksmith nerd, okay? I was going to say, one of the inspiring nations for Nardothel is uh, Italy, so it could, it could be olive oil for all we fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> I I choose to believe. That's, that's what they forged the salad dogs in. <laughs> I mean, that is that is what a uh, you know it, Italian blade <laughs> army you know, question all about. <laughs> and now that I've killed the DM, thank you everyone for joining well, the component you know, cast. Um, you know what? They you just they just need a second to recover. You're getting an extra inspiration for that. <laughs> Fuck it, that was good. That was good. It's been a now, while. Now I am, I am Cesare well, Martha God. Smith of the Salad. <laughs> First name Mario, last name Mario. Mario, <laughs> Mario. Right, okay, you start with the water. A, a jet of steam erupts. And give me a perception check. Uh, do you want to help me do it, Ruby, or do you want to roll yourself? I have dog shit, but I will help. Cool. So I got plus six. Yeah, roll advantage more. Uh, I'll take a 26, natural 20. Natural 20. You think the... For most, the steam and the noise from the war and the almost like scream that comes from the metal as it hits the water would be too much uh, in this particular quench for you to hear the message. However, with your keen perception, you do pick out the words as the metal begins to speak. Um. I'm just more amazed at my first idea. It's like, let's just try cooling it and see if that works. Is this like the the the, the Harry Potter, like you got to listen to the message underwater kind that of thing? That was because it was a mermaid egg. But sure, but... Same, similar. I, w I was thinking, he uh, you know, it's a memory me metal. You know, it's it, heat and coolness. They, they change the shape sure. of it naturally. It remembers what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, Peregrinus, the time has come. Everything you request, everything you have requested has been put in place. The cache is under the statue with the hidden eye. So there's a long moment there where like we're we're listening like Britain's listening to it. And like he pulls it out, the hissing stops. There's a pause, and he just looks at Ruby and says, "Who the fuck is Peregrinus?" <laughs> well, the <laughs> that's, that's, that's name number six on our list. The subject of that name is Falcon Peregrine. <laughs> Peregrine. Um, I'll you, both of you can give me a, a history check. That's sure. a that's a draconic name. Isn't it? It would be a draconic name, yes. Actually, if we scroll up here, uh, I think they may have been at the second decision as well. Uh, Pericles was there. Procopius. Peregrinus was not one who came. So Peregrinus is a definitely a draconic word, and those of you who would who Can understand I, I, the twenty-four. Do, 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 you, do you uh, sorry? Do you speak draconic? Yes. 
Uh, uh, Breton does not speak Draconic. Ruby, you would know that the no name Peregrinus means wanderer, like in a common translation. Okay. I don't think we're looking for a dragon, because I did true sight on everybody and there was nobody hit. So Peregrinus is a pseudonym, as we suspected. Wanderer is what it means. Which might mean somebody who is not frequently here. I don't know. The Good statue with putting in the quench though. That was smart man. The statue without It's a smith, of course. The statue that has no eye or something like what was that line? Yeah, I was gonna say, do we get that typed out so we can actually sure. keep that Yeah. Uh, like I said, Breton is really bad at things like this. Uh, Blake loves murder mysteries. Uh, stuff like that is... He's, he's not good at them, but he does love them. I may or may not have been binge-watching binge -watching Monk the uh, the entire last week where I couldn't Blake sleep. Blake also love murder <laughs> mysteries and stuff. Um, I can imagine Breton, that. So I'm glad that you're enjoying this as one much of, as I am. One of Breton's, uh, like hidden loves that he doesn't tell anybody about is he's got a collection of murder mystery novels in his room. You're allowed to like what you like, man. I, I like it. Brighton doesn't get it. <laughs> um, that. Peregrinus, it was mentioned of where a dead drop would take place. The time is yeah. now. Clearly, statue or something. Yeah, the statue of statue of the eye. So that sounds like a a maiden of justice, the one who can't see. Uh, the one, sorry, the one that Valamir is always. Uh, it would be, Caffrael. Yeah, that so she represents very very strongly reminiscent of that. But that's not a that's not an Arthurian deity. Nope. But if any homage would be paid with that, it'd probably be in the Sept of the Great Lady. Yeah. Who is the Great Lady? Ruby I mean, you are a Great Lady. We know Ruby, that. Ruby and Breton would both know. It's not a Thel. The the wife of Guillaume de, uh, Guillaume de Fionia. Yeah. It was uh, it was the wife of the person who founded the country. She is considered the great lady. She blind or anything? No, but she was an elf. <clears throat> As all great ladies are. That was that was also mentioned that there's a lot of elven heritage in Artifel, actually, as a matter of fact. Yeah. They like the climate. <laughs> Statue of Hidden Eyes. It might be worth going back and asking the steward about that. If anybody would know about a statue like that, he would probably know more. Why don't you go ask the steward? I'll go to the sept. Have a look around. Is there anything else you'd like to do in the crown smithy? Uh... Search for some statues with no eyes. <laughs> no, I think unfortunately we kind of hit the nail on the head here, but that does represent an entire period of us experimenting. I would say you could, in the same time, maneuver to another location and begin an investigation, but you wouldn't be able to take an action. I would say that the quenching and everything was like an action at a location. And I would say that you could go somewhere else, like do a perception, like scout it out, etc. But like physically talking to someone and engaging in a conversation, engaging in a major action wouldn't be able to be done in this period, no. I'm going to say that what Brett is going to use his time for then, would he actually, I'm going to ask this question because this would be something that Brett would probably have a better understanding of the faux pas of this. Are there any aerial creatures that are being allowed around the keep right now or has everything been grounded because of the lockdown? No. Um, <clears throat> so the house guards are patrolling still. So they're, they're just not entering the halls. A lot of the places, so that like all the courtyard areas are still being patrolled. All of the there are still people flying around the castle. They're not flying directly over, crossing it, but they are like skirting the walls. Um, 
There is aerial so, man maneuvering, patrolling. And I guess it's more of would Breton think it's a faux pas for Solorill to be doing that at the moment? Because the place is on lockdown, and this would be an unattended Griffin. I guess mm -hmm. the log because that would be an action. I guess if I just like ask, like, can I just perform reconnaissance at the moment? But my idea is like, can I just can I have Solorill do it instead? Is this is this his action to keep an eye out, or is it is that circumventing the system too much? I would say you could, in the same way that currently Valmir's lizard is set up doing <clears throat> recon of the stable, you could set up Silverru in the same way because it's not okay. directly interacting with their location. And I'll say that Silverru will get every now and then will get perception checks. Sure, I, I would say you could have told me that. No, it needs a mount to be allowed because of the lockdown. I would have been totally fine with that, because uh, that would have made a lot of sense. I would as well. tie. If, I would tie into your in the same way that when all of you left a location, I got you to do a perception check for mm -hmm. certain elements. Um, I will like it will roll into that moment. You to tap into that if that makes sense. Not specifically, what he's hoping for and what I'm hoping for, <clears throat> if we're getting people. It's the timing's gonna be off. We'll say we'll just except for now the perception is gonna make sense. That and that's what Breton's doing. He's gonna have uh he's gonna basically take a few moments to just have Silver Rail take to the sky, set up and answer any questions that people might have about this this creature that has suddenly appeared in the airspace. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um and are you maneuvering out of the Crown Smithy to another location or Yes. Uh in the event that we don't immediately find the statue, he's going to start making his way back to the offices of the steward to speak with the steward. Okay. And gain more information on that. Ruby, you wanted to maneuver somewhere else? Go to the sept. You want to go to the sept? Okay, so that's right out the front. Okay. Um, also, the green space around the sept is a set of gardens. I figured. Makes so sense. some of it's like well, vegetables. Some she's going to walk around, tour the gardens, going. It, it, this may take my entire rest of my night check. But she's going to tour the gardens, look at the statues, go into the sept, look at the statues, looking for anybody who's, who's blind, missing eyes, blindfolded, things okay. like that. You start investigating instead. No worries. Okay, we'll go jump over to Valmir in the rookery. Valmir, um, you start climbing the, uh, the, the tower and eventually you hear the fluttering of birds and carring um, before you are met with a large octagonal chamber that... Uh, it's a rookery. It's for, like, it's keeping and training birds. Uh, and there is a desk with a... I don't know if you've come across this race before. Um, there is a large avian individual. Um, they are... Uh, They've got, like, thin, light brown feathers. Um, a long sort of hook, hookish beak. Kind of like a very, very large eagle man. Uh, they look to be masculine because their bone structure seems to be quite strong. But they're, they've... It's just a, a feathered individual is uh, sat half wearing, like, what seemed to be, like... Um, Oh, a working outfit. Um, and yeah, they are sat um, writing at a desk. Uh, good evening. Um, <laughs> how, how goes things at the rookery? Um, uh, well, uh, um, pretty fine. Thank you. How's things here? Very well. Uh, is this where I would go if I was to send, if I was to want to send a letter? Um, yes. Um, well, I, we I'm have... curious. Do these birds go wherever you send want them to, or do they have to be specially trained to know the various locations at which they go? I uh, well, I send, I send them to various. They can be sent to various locations. Um, 
sometimes we'll have to send them to a location which would then forward on a message if it is quite the exotic location. That does make sense. That does make sense. Uh, I can are reach you aware anywhere that they're... in the kingdom, though. Of course. How many birds do you have here? One for every major town and city. Probably about it's probably about a hundred crows and ravens in this rookery. Um So I you are aware of the, the current lockdown that is that is going on, are you not? I I am, yes. Good. Um I'm here as an independent investigator and the reason for the lockdown is we have currently got a an investigation going on into the into some pretty minor subterfuge but espionage things going on. It's all very hush hush and very I'm trying to like convey like oh I'm gonna get let let him in on the the secrets and oh right, he's gonna be okay. part of the whole espionage spy thing that's super cool and stuff um but i basically say and you know there's these this kind of espionage work i mean there's a lot of things that you would need to do like sending letters back and forth and maybe maybe they've even come in here and sent letters from your rookery and I mean, that'll be... Feathers to heart. I have never pried into the messages that pass through my rickery. I am a humble master of bird. And no, flu of and feather. Um, you see him, like, open a little... Like, metal ornament thing. Like, uh, like an ornamental... It kind of looks like a jewelry box, but it's not. He opens it up. Um, and inside there is, like... These compressed cubes that kind of look like Turkish delight. And he picks one up and he eats, eats one. Oh, would you like one? What what is this? What am I ask? It's, well, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a delicacy of where I'm from. It's made from compressed mealworm, uh, ground up into a sort of paste and slurry. We then freeze it and um, they turn into this gelatinous sort of treat. I will pass. I've just had uh, dinner down down at the... You're missing out. He then pops another one in. Like, can't sit down with his beak. Um, anyway, yes. This shadowy, shady character may have used your rookery to send letters and of course, you are upstanding citizen. You'd never look at the letters, of course. But you may have seen this individual knowingly or not. So, can you rack your memory? And has there ever been anyone that just didn't didn't feel right? Didn't didn't have the right kind of sense about them? They they looked maybe like they were wanting to hide the communique that they were sending. Um, I don't think for a moment. Slowly tapping his face. I... I don't know. I've always been suspicious of that, um... A steward. He always has control over what comes and goes and has... He uh, sticks his fingers and his nose in every piece of conversation. I wouldn't be surprised if he had something going on, but no one seems to have been... I, I can't think of anyone like that. Where's the steward from? I think he was born in the city. Ah, so if you were to if he were to send letters to where he's from, they would they would not need to be sent via the rookery though. 
probably if he was contacting family, but he does all of the day-to-day -day of the castle. He has to take orders and send messages and messages all across the realm. Um, give me a perception check. Or an insight. No, give me an insight check. Valmir? Okie dokie. This guy say he sticks his fingers and his nose up th or in his nose and in into things like or did I mishear that? I think you misheard that. Okay. I'm gonna use another point of luck. Okay. Oh, not much better. Twelve. You're not sure if it is the nature of this creature. But he seems pretty sourced to you. <laughs> He seems pretty what? Sourced. Drunk. Ah, right, right, right. He doesn't seem like he has all of his faculties. His ducks in a row. <laughs> Should that be ravens? A little... One feather a of a... A little... Wing. Uh, is... He's a little feather tickled. Uh, yes, he's um. He... And now that you kind of get that, you got you get the impression that there was a little more than mealworms in those treats as well. Okay. See, he's, he's chomping down on some edibles. No, 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 no. As in, they're <laughs> like probably made with vodka. Okay. Um. So, right, obviously, no suspicion on yourself, but I'm, I, if you don't mind, I'm gonna take a look around the rookery and, you know, and it could be that this shady individual has been discreetly sending letters without passing you by, maybe doing it while you're asleep. So I'm just going to have a look around and uh, just investigate a little bit, if, you, if, you, if you're okay with this. Um, well, no one is authorized into the rookery by myself, so... I have been authorized by the king himself, the full Rome of the castle. Are, are you planning to defy the king? Make an intimidation check. Not a very high <laughs> DC. Uh, 26. That is now a 26. Um, no, 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 of course, of course not. Be, be my guest, um, let me know if you want introducing to any of the birds. I will do that. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I will, I will start wandering around Oops. the, uh, the various nests and, uh, Struck a couple of the friendly looking ravens and see what see what I can find. Cool. Um So there if you go to the so to this describe there's like it's probably like two or three story of like nests and cages. And then on the bottom floor, so he has a desk facing the door, and then behind him is like post office parcel shelves where they've got like the different ports and each one is like labeled with like a different town or city within uh, another cell and there's also one that's there's a few for like global capitals uh, okay. only on this continent though birds don't tend to be able to fly that far holding a missive um, plus also it gets to a time of like it's probably better just to cast a spell um, but yeah um there are some like letters in certain pigeonholes, um, but there aren't any like birds prepped and ready to go right now. Okay. As in, it doesn't seem like he was in the middle of um, prepping a bird for flight. I'm not going to open any of the letters, but I'm just going to see, like, pick them up, pick some of them up, and, and see like where they're off to, and mm -hmm. um, sure. especially. What I'm going to do is remembering, and and I have the letter with me. 
the handwriting on the letter, I'm going to try and compare that to handwriting on any of the letters that I see here. As in, like, you know, the, you know, the writing on the, the front of the envelope, basically. Right, yes. Um, so they did... If it's going by bird, it would be rolled and... Ah, uh, rolled up. And sealed. Um, however, most likely, they wouldn't come on those rolls and seals, so they'd have to be copied from something. Right. So an initial message most likely might have been copied, unless it has already been prepped and sealed. Sometimes, like, you know, some of the kings will have their own way to prep. But it's like, so there's a there's a mix of some that are, like, uh, that this guy has had to copy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there is a mix of some that are, like, just handed to him. And that's kind of apparent when you start seeing that some are on, like, blue paper with, like, elegant wax seals. And some are on, like, you know, look like they're all in the same... And is even on, like, near where the, uh, the parcel shelves are, there's, like, a few. There's just a couple of letters that have been, like, clearly have been... One is, like, half done. Um, where he's, okay. like, copying the exact text. Um, as for locations, right now there's uh, a missive being sent that seems to somewhere in Havare. There's a couple to Scholtes. Uh There is one to Modwin in uh, the Rien. Uh, and then there's a couple, like, one is apparently to, like, the far side of the city. Um, one, one seems to be like, uh, so there's like five or six that seem to be to like, from your, just your own intelligence, you said like, they all seem to be in the region of the capital. So it's like local wineries or something. It's clearly someone putting in orders kind of thing. Okay. Um, and none of the originals show any kind of similar handwriting to... Um... Not directly, no. Not the... Not directly the letter that you have in your hand. Okay. From the letter that you've got, it looks like someone's heavily broken up their normal handwriting. Mm, to try and hide it. Yes. It's right. it's like someone who normally writes in cursive has written in block capitals. And Brightquill. There is another reason that uh, that I that I'm here. We received an anonymous tip that some Illicit under the table dealing has been going on coming out of the rookery. Whether that is you that is partaking in this, or whether it is other shady characters, I, I have yet to find out, but we do know that there is some illegal happenings going on here. And I need to figure out if those illegal happenings have anything to do with the wider conspiracy um, re revolving around this cult of Null. And if you have any information about that, we could uh, definitely make things a lot easier. I don't know of anything illegal happening, nor do I know what a Null is. I'm Sorry, sir, I can't help you. Null is an evil god. You know how the city... Was it this city that had the blood flowing through it yeah. recently? Yeah. You know how the city had uh, you know, rivers of blood and all of that happening? Yes. That was the work of cultists of Null. Well, you better do a good job at catching them, then. 
Oh, well, that's why I'm here. Um, I'm going to walk into the area with all the, the birds and start, like, just... Go. Searching through. Okay. Give this one, if you are specifically searching for something, this might require either the rest of your time or an investigation yeah. check. Speed the rest up. of my time. Okay. No problem. So, towards the end, after poking around with the birds, and you do notice the the avian man get very agitated, as far as you can tell, with his species. Um, he begins to his his gets get all his feathers in a plume. But when you get near like a certain set of nests. And underneath the um underneath some of the bedding for the birds, uh, the nesting, you find several bottles of very, very strong alcohol. Where would this bird be going to? Um you wouldn't know. Okay. I'm only saying for potentially pretend that it's relevant. Um, uh, that would be irrelevant. This seems to be this individual's private supply that he relies on. What is this? These bottles? This is contraband, no? Uh, this is my personal effects. I don't know what... Why have I... they been hidden under the nest of one of these birds? I, I, um, um, because would you I, care to come clean potentially? I, they, if only so that we can make sure that none of this has to do with the evil cultists trying to kill the king. I. I hide them from the guards who happen to know I am quite the connoisseur who often try to take muscle muscle me for my supply. They're not allowed. We're, we're not allowed. They're not allowed to partake in such finery. I'm going to open one of the bottles. Okay. I'm going to sniff it. Mm-hmm. What does it, is it, it, does it smell like, uh, just alcohol? Yeah, it's like a bourbon. I'm gonna taste it. Yeah, tastes like bourbon. It's like, um, he's like trying to stop you, but knows that only, all he can do is kind of like, so, I mean, those are my, per that's my, per <clears> hmm. <throat> So, as I was saying, I'll take another swig. There are shadowy elements in this castle right now. And I think they may try to send some missives. And I think you can help me out. And I'll take another swig. I would like you to report to me and tell me everybody who tries to send a letter out of this castle now until the end of lockdown. Can you do that for me? I'll take another swig. Roll me an intimidation. And a constitution. <laughs> Spirits after wine. Fuck Not me. a great time. Four Fourteen intimidation. I'm rolling like absolute <laughs> dog shit today. It's so bad. Oh, this is something he's gonna get crunk today. <laughs> uh, constitution... Fucking roll, please. Fifteen. Okay, you're fine. It's starting to. You you know that a couple more sips and you're gonna like wobble hard. That you're you're at that stage of like the alcohol is. I can feel it in my ears. Um, and it's one of those things of anything more is gonna. I'm just gonna start talking about my passions passionately. <laughs> um, um, but you you kind of look at yours. Uh, if he's stumbling to make a, a, a response, I'm going to, like, you know, you know how if I, if I've got a drink and I'm like, oh, 
Just, yeah. Uh, sure. Oh, 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 of course, I, 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 will, I will notify you as, uh, of anything I find suspicious. Please just put it down. It's, that cost me, that cost me 150 gold pieces. I will put the cork in and slide it back into the nest. There's a view of relief on that, man. I'll see you soon, right, Quill? Yes, yeah, yes. And then I will, I will leave the, the rookery. Okay, no problem. About this time, you leave the rookery. Um, you see Breton uh, leaving the crown smithy and you find uh, Ruby in the set gardens. You see they're out in the garden. You kind of all make eye contact. That ends your evening dinner period. Um, Ruby, I will also say that in your walking around of the gardens, you saw like loads, not loads, but a, a few servants uh, running between the kitchens um, to the various, uh, like, so some of them were heading like with large, uh, like pots and bowls towards the refectory which you think is probably where all the servants and stuff are getting their dinner. Uh, and then also more elegant meals were being prepared and sent towards, like, the Palace of the Plains um, and various things. So it's basically, you've seen servants milling about. You've seen a lot of uh, maneuvering, maneuvering about um, in this time. Like abnormal activity for this time? No, or? as in it's dinner time and they've got to try and get service to an entire castle locked in okay. who are all having dinner um, roughly at the same time because sure. there's nothing else really to do. Just uh, for the sake of security, she is going to have her gem over an eye and just it's not going to stop anybody. You know, not, not really, but as people walk past her, she's going to take a look at them, make sure they're not disguised, no illusions, not being followed. That's not a big one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Nothing catches your all-seeing eye. Um, oh, dear. And you don't find a statue of a woman with their eyes, a blindfolded lady, anything, or anyone obscuring their eyes in the gardens of the Sept, or, or casually walking around the Sept of the Great Lady. In fact, it's um, with the in the Sept of the Great Lady, in the center of it is a statue of Nardathel, and she is, like, complete opposite. You can see her face, see her ears, bright, like, uh, floor-length golden, like, oh, sorry, ringlet sort of uh, hair down to the floor. She's holding a harp and playing it, and there's, like, water surrounding her, like, it's complete opposite i think goldberry from um yeah like lord of the rings um sure. but yeah you don't find a, a statue mark matching matching that description there but yeah we, okay. we're going to the night period now how are you assigning yourselves are you resting are you going to try and investigate a certain region are you going to i will say that there's like you have two in like the night period, which is like up to um, the witching hour, and then like early morning night. So, for example, like yeah, last light to midnight, midnight to first light kind of period are the two periods coming up. I'm calling them as, as one section, but we can split them in terms of because sometimes clandestine operations require. The subtlety of the shadow of deep dark. Um, with me needing only four hours, um, I'm thinking maybe I I take four hours now to have a little bit of a get rid of this alcohol uh, from mm -hmm. my system, um, sure. and then I can be up searching for clandestine bullshit uh, while. Um, Brett and Ruby sleep potentially. Okay. Yeah, I guess uh, we'll pull the extra four hours, stay up for Valmer to get his sleep in. Since uh, I think, unfortunately for us, we actually have to get eight hours of sleep, so we're going to take up two full blocks of, of yeah, time that's doing that. Reason why I split it. Mm -hmm. uh, Silver Earl doesn't have dark vision. He'll have him come down, mm -hmm. nest up in uh in the stable. Being set up. Uh, the alarm was not triggered for the stables. No, it was not. Eight hours. Which brings the potential situation up that the message was already delivered. Possibly. That was 
that was the person discarding the message after it had been already found. Um, which is unfortunate. Which also leads into the potential of whoever... The, since the message is already found, it may have already been deciphered and what it leads to may also already be gone. But there's no reason not to, to do that now because we have the time. So... Um, I remind you that you also in each period have the one ability to ask a question to like a staff member and such if you need to like lose some things in etc. Yeah, because Breton was going to potentially ask the steward like, where is uh... he's just going to ask like, where is this like uh, somebody described a statue to me, a statue like this, like where would that be on the castle grounds? So you okay? is everyone okay with that being asked as the staff question? Oh, it's one for the entire group. Yes, per section. Uh, Ruby, if well, she said if I have the option, she'll. I would ask. Uh, is there anybody here who has been hired in the last three months? Who's your new? Who are so your that, new hires? That would that would be. So sorry, just to clarify this question. The questions are normally for location purposes, so it's like a quick thing of like, hey, do you happen to know where hiking so-and-so is right now? So that you can say, check if you want to go to a location to find someone to talk to. It's not me amorphously answering character question that you would ask a person in terms of in air quotes interrogation. Uh, so it's like uh, for, yeah, for trying to find, do you happen to know a, a do you like do you know where i might find a statue of this description or is it like hey i'm looking for blank where would i find them right now in the same way of if you're walking around a village in an rpg and like where's the local tavern and they go oh it's over there by the thingy that it's that kind of it's that kind of question answer it's not it's like just a, it's Daggerfall over again, walking around talking people just like it where is this tavern i'm sorry i don't respond to that tone i and anyways, this has been a, a session of sessions for references and yeah. my brain and how it's handling it. Uh, so sleep it's depression a is a hell of a thing, guys. It's a uh, yes, it's a uh, checking question, not a investigative so. investigative question, if that makes sense. So if if, if everyone's okay with that being the question for this first night period, it does. Yeah, it would try, save try us the questions this. for the next night period, so Valmir could ask whatever he wants during it. When we met up, by the way, uh, can just. Because I would, I wouldn't have known about this. All of the stuff with the, the screaming metal and mm -hmm. you know information being passed back and forth and stuff as well. No, that's what I'm saying. Like when we would meet up, uh, it would be passed along. It's like, so uh, we deciphered what the, the metal might have been. Uh, it was a message. Uh, the message had this to say, uh, Peregrinus, the time has come. We have delivered what you asked for under the statue of hidden eyes and uh, assuming that we did get the information according to the steward this statue of hidden eyes might be in certain location here yes so if you are asking the steward of that question they would say there are there's a couple of locations around the castle where statues are located one of them is in the gardens and in the great the sept of the great lady um the palace baths also has a lot of ornamental artwork and there are various statues in hallways and chambers. Hidden Eye didn't directly ring a bell. However, they do note that uh, the baths has a lot of artwork. I was going to... Like, the second you pointed out statues in the bath, my thought is, like, is that a ceremonial, like, politeness thing? of people averting their eyes in the baths? <laughs> Sorry, that's again. You're you're touching on things that make my brain just want to think about everything, Midge. Uh, I really so yeah. enjoyed crafting this investigation sick, but I will say. So yeah, that'll, that's passed along to Valmir, so he has uh, the information that came from the uh, the stone. I will quite slurredly say that in the course of my investigations, uh, I, I have imbibed. I it was, it was the. It had to be done to do the... I need to rest. It doesn't pass... You, you're very perceptive, Breton. Valmy's had a little bit to drink. 
in part of his investigation. So it's Dalmer's like, poisoned right now, right? Five or six swigs of uh, bourbon and also strong red wine with the Queen of Havre. And that's He's mixing different drink. alcohols. If you mix He's... drinks, you're in... Mm, I'm going to have a headache. So yes, I believe we can uh, we can we can honestly say that Valmir is poisoned right now. So uh, what happens if we just uh, we just gauntlet on the forehead and five points of lay on hands to remove poison? That feels better. <laughs> Still probably a little bit buzzed. Oh yeah, but you're not. It, it's not affecting your rolls in any way. I will say this: nice. the existence of bourbon implies the existence of Kentucky, because that's the only place you can actually get bourbon from. <laughs> True, true. I didn't want to break down it into saying it is a wheat-based whiskey with a slightly smoke. It has been kept in an oak based smoke barrel for bourbon. I always thought it was from a region of France, like the whole champagne what? thing and bourbon is also a region of France. And then it just got so does, a name change. Uh, does that mean the next time uh, somebody asks you, and what food did America create? Can we say bourbon? Is, like, is that a legitimate answer? <laughs> it is us. Yeah, I believe bourbon. Bourbon, it is, bourbon is actually an American thing, yeah. That's why we oh, don't you're have welcome. it here. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I, that's why I didn't know that it wasn't the same thing as the bourbon whiskey. Is it different? I have no idea. I don't do drinks no, like that. No, bur bourbon is but it's normally an import. Like, we have scotch, we okay. have whiskeys, we have, like, you know. But I think bourbon is an American import. I drink cider, I don't, I don't do it. Because Jack Daniels is technically bourbon, technically. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, Valmir sleepy. Valmir okay, can go. going back to your chambers. Get his. Okay. Well, I guess I mean that. Uh, or, or the Queen of Havre's gym. You know, you know, the invite might come on the way. That's, uh, that's the, how's the Dutch courage gonna take? You're like, <laughs> you're pretty sourced. <laughs> Hold up. Let me let me do a roll. Sorry. So or should I, should I say the Dutch uh, Unlucky number thirteen. Yeah. No, we're just gonna go. <laughs> Hit the highest you've rolled all night. <laughs> I mean, so without the you without the use of a luck, yes, leg legitimately is. <laughs> so I guess you're not getting lucky. <laughs> God damn it! On fire today! Holy shit! <laughs> I'm going sleepy. I, I'm sleepy. I'm sleepy. I'm sleepy. I'm sleepy. Okay. You're going to sleep. <laughs> So, uh, Ruby and Breton, how are you allocating your time for this period? Uh, we got some statues to search. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, we can do this in character. So, we're looking for the statue still, and this is the time period to do it. Uh, break it down, search two different areas, and see if we get lucky. The look on her face, you can tell that Ruby wants to say something. Probably inappropriate, but doesn't. Instead, she just look down, sigh... Yeah. I know, I know. We were both going to the bath. Foregone conclusion, but... We actually have stuff to take care of. I know. Fine. I didn't find anything in the garden or the sept. According to the steward, there's statues all over the place. Nothing that immediately rings a bell of unseen eyes. So unless there's... And Breton is going to close his eyes... Unless there's a chevalier that was noted as... <laughs> this is a question. Is there like a Don Quixote figure like in... In the like chevalier history, like the, the noble knight who was... Uh... <laughs> and I realize it's kind of a big question to ask of just of an entire religion, but this is just brainstorming of like, what might you consider unseen eyes? Yeah, like, that's, see, that's that's kind of the problem because there's so many saints and stuff. They could easily be something of that nature. Uh, you could see something like that in the halls of Cheval. Um, sorry. The, the yeah. other immediate response is like, are there statues? Like, where would you find statues of things that you wouldn't consider like? watching you like are is there a place with like statues of birds or something like that that are just kind of like set about we're, we're looking for statues that we're maybe looking for statues that are not obvious we may be looking we may be looking at it too literally it is mm. a secret message if you're ever going to if, if i was a spy 
try to put myself in the mind of somebody who's trying to hide things. A statue is a good place to hide things, but it would have to be in a place where people don't often go. At least not frequently. It's also said that it was hidden underneath it. I'm going to guess they weren't digging up the stonework or the groundwork if it was in the garden to put it underneath. So this might be a statue of an overhang gargoyle? Maybe, or a place where the ground is loose and you can bury things next to it. I didn't see anything in the garden, but that doesn't disclude the possibility of something not existing. Uh, maybe it could be anything. Archways, even domed, high-rise positions of, of that. Uh, Shall we take a look? Okay, so who's just going where? Know, yeah, just need to know where we're going to search. Uh, I need to bring the map back up. Having the map back up uh, would be it's, a really it's important. It's also, thing I've, I have loaded the map in game, by the way. It's not just in Discord, as, as I know. Uh, if you are using game as well. Sure. Uh, it's called, like, Citadel Map, I think. Just keep looking at all these areas, wondering of like if inspiration is just going to pop and it's going to be obvious. Oh, we've got half an hour left of session, give or take. We're going to use it. Yeah. We can also just start eliminating areas. Um, the summer garden is located above the baths. I think Breton's going to search the Summer Garden. That's where I was. Wasn't no. I? No, you were in the garden around oh, the Scepter of the Great that, Lady. The okay. green area, yeah. No, the Summer Garden is a separate building above the baths. Yes. I think uh, Ruby is going to check the refractory. Sure, okay. All right. Uh, we'll start with Ruby. Uh, you enter the refectory, uh, there's a few people cleaning up. Uh, so the refectory is like long, large, like canteen, essentially, uh, for servants. And it's clearly like this people like basically clean up wooden bowls, like scraping muck off the tables. There's like five or six servants, uh, uh, probably from the kitchen, like essentially cleaning up after food service. Uh, one or two guards are actually sat at the end of one of the tables playing dice it seems they're on break i'm guessing uh you you would hazard a guess sorry um but yeah it's about uh, about eight people in this room right now and it's a long probably could see up to about 400 people if it needed to um when you know this place is fully staffed and garrisoned mm -hmm. no statues in here though um, there, there aren't really any statues, no. There are, like, paintings and such, but it's kind of, this is very working individual's location. And where the refectory is, is also, like, um, there's, like, some staff access, etc., up to, like, the what would be parts of the walls, uh, up towards the Palace of the Lady. Um, and yeah, it's more like this is like staffing quarters, that kind of thing. Um, you do find that some of the staff and the people that are in the room are kind of giving you a bit of a quizzical eye. They're very, like, uh, until one of them comes up to you and is just like, um, excuse me, my lady, uh, you okay? You lost. No. Just looking around. This is a beautiful place. Oh, well, I suppose it is. Uh, when you see the, uh, see parts of the castle every, every day of the, every day of the week, um, 
kind of get used to it, I guess. I'm, I'm from Arthre. We, the architecture there is very different. It's nice to see the influences of the places that have come and gone. I'm, it's a I'm lot not... more elven back home. I'm, I'm not one for masonry, miss. But as, as you say, so I, I can, I can understand the beauty of it. Can, uh -oh. I, can we get, can we get you anything? Or are you, are you, do you require any help at all? A question for you. Sure. Uh, it's a statue of a blind. Uh, I'm sorry. The, I, the the phrase was it written somewhere? Statue so that under uh, under the statue of hidden eyes. I heard a phrase that there was a, a statue somewhere around here of something that had hidden eyes. Do you have any idea what that might mean? Oh, hidden eyes. Uh, hidden eyes. Um, there's to their thinking, and then one that has clearly been being nosy. A slightly older woman, uh, probably in charge of this group of people cleaning. Um, kind of perks up. You'll probably want to go to, uh, you'll probably want to head to either the bars or the summer garden for something like that, my, my lady. It's, um... In nice sounds like a foreign influence kind of thing. There's a, there's a, quite often, uh, like there's uh, you know, all sorts of statues around there, very unique. Um, in nice is always a little bit creepy, but you know, that would be my guess. Thank you. And she'll hand him five gold, and both of them five gold. I do so. That's sure, that's like they, years, they, they, years, wa years wages to these guys. They're, so. they're both very. They try to make you not give them the money. They're like, but eventually they acquiesce. Thank you. Um. Yeah. No worries. Okay. She won't. She won't linger. Okay. Uh, can we insight these guys real? Just real quick. Just sure. Before I leave. Who Sorry, are you inciting? The, as in the the staff the speaking to you, or anyone else in the room? Like, what's the the, the one? Uh, yes. <laughs> sure. You want to just general vibe check the room? Mm -hmm. Thirty twenty. Thirty twenty. Um, the cleaning staff seem very very well mannered. Like the the people that came, the person that came up to you genuinely wanted to help, and the one that butted in is like one well, of the ones. They've been here a long, much longer, and they kind of now know how the castle works and was just like, I've got the answer for it. You kind of where you want to go with that. Um, you did also pick up that the two guards who were on break were paying strong attention, but didn't feel as welcoming as the... Uh, their eyes didn't feel as welcoming as, say, the, the more curious cleaning stuff. Should walk out and kind of stretch and yawn and look at them and go, long night? Just, no, I just, I was meant to be on leave. Um, very long night. Yeah, I know the feeling. I, uh, the nights spent on watch are not pleasant. <laughs> well, luckily we're not on watch right now, but yeah, you're, you're right. I just wanted to go home for a bit. You're not on a watch. What are you doing here? Oh, the, me and me and Hal here are just taking a break. Insight. Are they, they armed? Armored? Uh, they're armored. Uh, they are armed, but they were like, like I said, like they were gauntlets off playing dice when you came. Oh. In. Okay. And then okay, she'll look at. Them. Where's the fun happening around here? You know. Oh, if man. I if I wanted to get away from the noble, mm. you know all the all the, mm -hmm. I want a place where fun happens in here. Where would I go? Southwest Tower, fourth story, just after midnight. Okay, what will I find there? Like five minutes from now? Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's probably about 11 right now. Mm. Okay. Well, no, no. So they've just finished. It's, it's probably about nine. Nine. It's like this okay. is the nine, ten, eleven midnight period, I'd say. Um, 
He says, Southwest Tower, fourth story, just yeah. after midnight. <clears throat> few drinks, few games. Away from prying eyes. Close to the chambers. I think I might be there. Um, just when you go, use the phrase pump a nickel. Pump so they nickel. don't know, so they know you're not going to get me in trouble. Sure. Thank you, Mr. or Sir. I'm sorry, sir. Oh, um, I'm, I'm not, sir. I'm. Sergeant Reginald. Sergeant Reginald. All right. Thank you. He nods. He goes back to Blaine Dice. Uh, Ruby will subtle cast as she's walking away, ascending uh, to uh, Valmir and... Or I guess I can't do Valmir. I can do one. Oh, can I twin cast sending? That's a... Oh, he's also sleeping. That's true. Valmir's meditating. Uh, I think he can receive missives in meditation. Yeah, but can you twin cast sending? That's the... I it, it's, it's, it's single it's, target single target spell yeah, yeah I twin think cast can. allows you to pick another target as long as within range which yeah, sending is the range true. is unlimited so she will then say uh looks like there's going to be a little bit of partying at the southwest tower just after midnight fourth story password is puppernickel I my my response will be um what I'm currently dreaming about. Oh no. <laughs> huh? Ah! <laughs> teeth wine darkness What big teeth you have <laughs> <laughs> I need an adult Breton, you said you're going to the summer garden. Yes, he chose the summer garden. So to get to the summer garden you do have to go through the baths. And you do notice that the baths are very nice heated pools. Uh, actually, there's also some like cooler plunge pools and stuff. It's a big bathhouse. This doesn't look like this is... Or, uh, actually, as you go in, there is like a timetable where you can see like what times the guards and stuff are allowed in. Mm -hmm. And it says like 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Um, is for like staff usage. And then any time beyond that is... For guests and above, kind of. Um, and it is this l lovely, lovely, um, like, very mosaic-ed uh, bathhouse. And then you actually see above you is, like, hanging planters and, um, like, little ledges where, like, trees have been planted hanging over the pools and the baths. And above, you see also a big staircase. And above, there is essentially where the heat of the water rises. It's essentially a greenhouse garden on, like, a... a above you is, like, a glass floor uh, with staircases into it. And above it, you can see there is, like, a, a, a nice glass garden and, like, a butterfly house. Which is what you would think would be the summer garden. Um, give me a perception check. As you wander the glass garden. Uh, I think I'm going to use our sessional inspiration for that because we're getting sure. pretty close to the end of session as yeah. it is. Don't forget you've got two of those because you got awarded one for making me fucking laugh. Uh, if the other one's going to go away at the end of session, too, well, let's, I mean, we can keep on burning these all day long, I guess. Sure. Yeah, why not? Man, those rolls. Okay, I mean. We have rolled so dog shit today. Like, I, I've actually four, rolled really good. Those are my, those are the only three rolls today I've had that are under 10. Okay, I've rolled really dog shit. You've today. rolled not so great, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, 12 is the is the high number there. I will say you get, you know, a message from Ruby really early on, but eventually you, you start 
you're going around and it takes you most of the time and you've been it's a lovely garden lovely warm very warm environment actually it might be uncomfortable for you uh there's butterflies and things but eventually you find a little nook where there's a bench and a, you're looking around as you're there's statues but none of them are ma matching a description until you see you look down and there are like stone mosaic vent covers that are allowing the heat from below to come in and they're all and a lot of them have different mosaic pictures depictions in them slightly raised sections on some of them and start following them around there's plenty in the gardens it's almost like uh, they're various depictions of things until you find this little corner where there's a bench and you find one of a lady whose eyes have been burnt away I'm not there but like Caffriel style burned away no uh Britain, quick religion Our safety net is gone. Not that the safety net helped very much. Uh, 22. This is a saint by the name of... Uh, hang on. Uh, in, my, in, my, in my lack of sleep, I immediately wanted to joke her. Her name was uh, Saint Cassia. <laughs> Oh, Whoever called uh, M Midge caught on to that very quickly. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> it is. Hold on. I was thinking Saint Augustine, but only because I guess uh, I've got James' surname on the brain. I'm Just looking got half Ray on the brain. To be honest, I'm looking for an old. Anyway, uh, this why do you have to is... roll so well? Now I have to come up with a name for it. God damn! No, no, no. It's not. It's. I'm trying to find the exact. I, I, I thought I knew it, but I, I'm triple checking myself because I want to make sure that I'm giving the right law here. Apologies. Anyway, you find this. Um, I'll get you who it is in a second, but uh. Yes. Um, this is actually a depiction of St. Agnes of Ivy, who we will know is the person who wrote the Book of Annihilation. Uh... I feel like that should have rung a bell. Which is the book with the prophecy of the what will happen at the end of the world. In. Yeah. That, that should, fuck, that should have rung a bell. Didn't she lose her eyesight after writing the book? She went crazy. She went crazy. Yeah. She went crazy. But she never... Well, yeah, she really also... Nice. The, the, it is... Uh, in the, She had a prophetic dream uh, where a David of the Chainbreaker came to her and warned her of the end. Uh, the more she recalled it, uh, the more she was overwhelmed by madness, uh, and she never slept again. But she spent about a year doomsaying and pilgr pilgrimaging. But yes, she did eventually lose her eyes. They physically sort of left her. Mm -hmm. I guess, Chronic uh, insomnia will do that to you. <laughs> yeah, don't oh, fuck, don't even get me started. Um, 
So Breton's going to search around the area underneath it. Like you said, these are kind of like mosaics for the vent grates. Yes. So some of them might be lifted up. It could be looked under. He'll start with the, the literal interpretation of that, but then he'll transfer over to like, if the statue, obviously the statue doesn't have eyes, but it must, it, it would be presumably looking in a direction, even if it can't see. And he'll, mm -hmm. he'll go there next if the first one doesn't turn up any results. Sure. Um, so if it was looking somewhere, it would actually be looking straight up at you as you picked it up. Uh, but you, you lift it and you instantly notice that this one has been shifted recently. Mm -hmm. um, and in it, you find uh, a box that has been opened, cracked open. Like a crate, a storage crate. This shouldn't be here because this is an access vent. Like this is for like steam and hot air. But clearly something has been left in here previously um the box is like a wooden crate filled with straw and there is the indent of something it were looking like something that was like resting in like the fine sawdust and straw like it's clearly been there to pad it in some way uh the box itself looks to be um Something maybe for bringing food in. Like as in it would be, it would have come in in like a food shipment. It looks like a, in fact, you, if you pick up the box, it looks like uh, this was meant to be cheese in here. It's clearly not cheese. <laughs> It always comes back to cheese. Yeah, it's always it's always the cheese man. Blessed other cheese makers. Um Be the all the mighty cheese -a the colors mm -hmm. Most powerful thing. Warps your dreams. Then I guess uh the message that Ruby gets back is too slow. Whatever it was is gone already. I think Breton will replace the box here. He's not going to move it. He's going to leave it here. He's not going to disturb it any farther mm -hmm. uh, in case they want to come back here and think more about it. Um, it was a food box that had there's a depression in it. What was the depression? Like, what was the shape or the style the depression took? Cylindrical. Cylindrical. Big as a scroll case, smaller than that, telescope sized. Um. About, uh, it's about scroll case, about, about, um, probably a bit fatter than a scroll case. Some sort of cask, maybe. Ooh. Large bottle. Um, hunk of metal. Uh, probably about like uh, a forearm, a normal person's forearm, not a Breton forearm, normal person's forearm. Uh, I guess that'll get passed along in the uh, mm -hmm. the sending as well. Okay. But that's kind of a that's kind of the dead end for that kind of thought. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily. We have context of how they're communicating. It's dead drops. We also have some locations to ask if anyone was sighted near. Yeah. Which is what Ruby's going to be doing when she gets up to the party. He's like, who hangs out over, uh... I'm sorry, the exact location where Breton is is currently just jumping my mind. Summer, summer Garden. Garden. Summer Garden. 
Anybody who's you know there who ain't supposed to, we'll get when I get to the party, that'll be that. Yeah. Or I'll get assassinated. Oh. <laughs> That's true. We can find that out nice next time. Is there anything you guys want to talk about before we end tonight's session? Because technically, this would be a regroup phase. Dalmir's waking up. Yep. Wake me up. Ruby's Wake me up inside. Planning to go up. off for the rest of her night to this party. Uh, Breton's going to go to sleep because somebody needs to start getting their sleep in early. And Breton will. Well, I guess mm -hmm. Dalmir just did that, but Breton would like to get his in as well because. It's going to take longer for him than it's going to take for, you know, yeah. Dalmir is. Um, mm -hmm. And it, honestly, it just seems efficient to have one person sleeping and two people searching at all times. Uh, that just seems like smart yeah. navigation. Minimize Ruby's how many times through. you're not investigating, for sure. Ruby's probably going to try to push through the night and see if she can make the con save for not being exhausted the next day. Cool. I would say because of when you guys slept, it would be next lunchtime that you'd start making that con save. Um, so you'd have this night and morning. Um, you all are also aware that in the next afternoon slot, because this is something I forgot that was in the recap. So this can be recap in the next afternoon slot. So just after lunch is when the next council session is due to be. So all of the major players will be in the same location for a bit. Which could also be if you wanted to break into, say, rooms or anything of that side, it could be a good time to do that. I'm just feeding you ideas, like... Or we get everybody there to announce their uh, fealty to the king, and the king who can detect, or Bastion who can detect lies, just picks up the one who's lying and grab them. You know... I hear some, I hear some vows of fealty from everybody. How about that? There's things you can do, but also, as I remember, learning people, learning when people are in certain places can uh, be rather revealing. That would be my piece of advice. Yep. But uh, yeah, if there's nothing else, we'll end today's session here because I think that's a clean place to cut off. So this has been the first, essentially, day of the investigation into the citadel of Gervalu. Uh, but all I've got left to do is to thank those who have been here. So thank you to Lord Lambert, to DM Lake, and to Bethany Rose. I've been Midgeman. We have been the component cast with the Elendor Chronicles, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye now. Ooh.